people from all over the world join my live chat. So hola, ciao, bonjour, good day, mateys, aloha, yo, dobri vecher, huva paiva, huvan avun. Yes, I read that off a piece of paper and I probably got them all wrong. So welcome everybody to this live chat about, mostly I'm talking about several defense filings from yesterday that has some interesting new information. As always, this should be about Abby and Libby. It just seems like every single day it gets further and further away from getting justice for Abby and Libby. So I want to always at least remind people this should be about figuring out figuring out who bridge guy was and holding him accountable so let me just go through my chat rules that i always used to always try to start with um slow mode 15 seconds between messages apparently the chat goes by fairly quickly i don't know i'm in a different browser there are all types of, opin of opinions welcome in my chats just please be polite to each other and don't hate other people just because they have different theories than you Moderators will ban anyone in the chat who is being rude to anyone or commenting negatively about people instead of the case, which we're here to talk about the case, not random people. People in the chat can click the name of an annoying person <laughs> and block their messages. Type the at symbol plus the first few letters of someone's screen name to reply directly to another chatter, but your message will be public. So when they see, if you like do at whatever, my name is Tom Webster. I would see your comment and my screen name would uh, show up in like orange and white to see that somebody uh, replied directly to me, but I'm not even in that chat, so don't even bother. If I don't highlight your comment, it does not mean I disagree with you or dislike you. Because, um, yeah, just chat with other people because I'm busy reading PowerPoint slides. I have about 20 PowerPoint slides today based on what was uh, filed yesterday by the defense. In the top of the chat box, it defaults to show top chat but you can change it to live chat to see all the comments. Um, I try not to curse, but I can't promise, any, promise anything. Actually, today, I have my first curse in uh, this PowerPoint slide later. I don't highlight comments with curses in them, so don't include a curse if you want me to highlight your comment. Finally, initials I use in my PowerPoint file, uh, you know, my PowerPoint slides, just to try and like cut down on text. So B slash R is Baldwin and Rosie, the defense attorneys for Richard Allen. NM is prosecutor Nicholas McClelland. LE is law enforcement. And PP is a new one that I've added for the Purdue professor. I figured I'd just use his uh, Purdue professor instead of naming him. So this is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to go through these uh, 20 slides. So as I said before, today is March 13th, yesterday, the 12th. The defense for Richard Allen filed quite a few different um, motions. One of them was 18 pages. And some people say, why do you do these PowerPoint slides? Because people say they either have bad eyesight and they can't read like an 18 page document or they have attention deficit and they can't concentrate. So I try and summarize all these documents as I read through them and make these PowerPoint slides to condense them as small as possible or into whatever, just to give everybody like the basic idea of what um, has been revealed. So some very interesting stuff and some kind of controver controversial stuff that um, the defense is bringing up. So talk politely amongst yourselves in the chat as I ramble on. So March 12th, motion to compel and request for sanctions filed by the defense. The summary is they asked Judge Gull to compel McClelland to provide to provide discovery. And there's some people here who don't, um, they're from different countries who don't speak English. So discovery is basically just evidence. So the defense is asking Gull to compel McClelland, the prosecutor, to provide evidence to Baldwin and Rosie that the defense believes exists, but McClelland has not turned over. Baldwin and Rosie seek a sanction against the state for a variety of discovery violations. The sanction requested is that any delay in the trial created by the state's violation of rules of discovery be assessed against the state. So for people who don't know, currently the trial is scheduled for May 13th to the 31st. Carroll County local rule. The prosecution must provide a discovery within 30 days of Baldwin and Rosie being assigned as Rick's attorneys. Then the defense had 30 days from then 
so like 30 days after the prosecution handed over um, the discovery. So essentially uh, 60 days after Baldwin and Rosie started, they were supposed to give their discovery to McClelland. So here I sometimes do parentheses with my thoughts. So what about the prosecution's February 22nd claim? They haven't gotten anything from the defense in over a year, except for six expert witness names. Yeah, the, I, as I said in my seven hour uh, Frank's memo video, it seems like law enforcement was so disorganized with this evidence that, I, I mean, I just don't understand how they ran this investigation. And then I guess McClellan kind of has to wait for some of these, um, not some of these, all these files to be turned over from law enforcement, which seems so disjointed. We'll, we'll talk about that later. The prosecution should have turned over discovery by December 14th, 2022, 30 days after Baldwin and Rosie were assigned, but they are still handing over evidence when there was a previous November 1st, 2023 deadline. So February 20th, 2024, a few weeks ago, Baldwin and Rosie requested over 20 pieces of evidence they believe exist, but McClelland has failed to turn it over and asked for, they also asked uh, McClelland to clarify if it, those items of the 20 pieces of evidence had already been turned over in the large amount of evidence and Baldwin and Rosie just had not found it in the evidence. McClelland did not respond to the defense letter, um, I guess on February 20th, but he sent one e-discovery strand which contained a small portion of evidence requested, including video interviews of witnesses that have never been turned over involving people integral to the timeline, 14 months late, but with no ex explanation why. McClelland is supposed to turn over everything, but obviously hadn't. And if Baldwin and Rosie had not requested those interviews, they would have likely never been given to Baldwin and Rosie. This is a repeated frustration by Baldwin and Rosie. Baldwin and Rosie are left to hope that law enforcement and McClelland turn over everything, including exculpatory evidence in favor of Rick's innocence. Some evidence has referenced other evidence, but I'm oh, sorry, some of the evidence that like the defense has received has referenced other evidence like other reports, but Baldwin and Rosie have never received those other um, reports and stuff. Exculpatory evidence has not been tur turned over in a timely manner, which I, I agree with that. Um, McLean, there's quite a few more slides just for this one motion. It's a summary of 18 pages. McClelland did not give Libby's phone data to Baldwin and Rosie by the December 14th, 2022, 30-day deadline. On June 17th of 2023, they had to ask him again, but they did not get it until September 8th, a few months ago. So this is something that I added to this since not everybody maybe saw this. So discovery, as I said before, is evidence that's turned over. And then a filing um, October 2nd motion for discovery deadline. I guess the defense or prosecution may have said, Evidence had been turned over from McClellan to Baldwin and Rosie on December 7th, 2022. So for that one, they did meet the deadline, but after that, pretty much now. December 21st, 2022, February 13th. So we all have talked about this April 3rd phone call where Rick allegedly made some admissions about guilt to his wife. So it seems like from February 13th to April 3rd, that was the amount of time that his defense team had last received some kind of evidence. Because obviously, obviously some of us have wondered did the defense team go to Westville on April 3rd and pre present Rick with certain evidence that he felt whatever maybe implicated him and then he felt he had to call his wife? We'll have to wait and see. So February 13th, April 20th, 2023, May 23rd, June 27th, 16 hard drives, four flash drives, and one disk. Also September 8th, September 18th, the 21st, and the 27th, totaling 14 hard drives, five flash drives, and three disks. There are other items from the June 2023 request list, like Libby's 205 and 207 Snapchat photos that have not been turned over. I guess they want the actual metadata directly from Libby's phone. Obviously, all of us have seen those, and they're available on Google Images via search. The week of August 5th, 2023, Baldwin and Rosie took depositions revealing Odinist, sorry, revealing Odinist investigated by law enforcement. Um, these three officer, officers, Todd Click, Greg Ferency, and Kevin Murphy. So they wrote like an 85 page report based on their investigations of these like five or six Odinist guys. 
September 8th, 2023, McClellan gave a daunting amount of evidence, including a letter from Click's lawyer discussing Click's concern that McClellan might be unaware of law enforcement's prior investigation into the Odinists that Click believed were likely involved into the murders of Abby and Libby. This letter and its contents were highly exculpatory for Rick, and it took McClelland 131 days to turn it over, which prevented Baldwin and Rosie from helping defend Rick in a timely manner and be prepared for the August depositions of law enforcement, which I agree with that. This delay of turning over this evidence has definitely hindered the defense, and it truly is unacceptable. But I don't know how much of it is related to just the massive amount of information that was never properly organized. September to October of last year, McClelland gave Baldwin and Rosie 14 hard drives, five flash drives, one disk, and a certain e-discovery, and certain e-discovery mostly about the Odinists. So it seems like um, the defense did these depositions in last August of Holman, Liggett, Lesenby, where the defense revealed like, we think that the Odinists are involved in the murders and you did not properly investigate them. So it seems like after August of last year, law enforcement did go back and in investigate and interview some of these Odinists. So then over, over the next month or two, they started handing over their whatever discovery and evidence about the Odinists. October 6th of last year, McClellan gave um, Baldwin and Rosie, this is um, some of the most important, not important, but most interesting revelations from yesterday. So August, I'm sorry, October 6th of last year, McClelland gave Baldwin and Rosie geofencing evidence that contained what appeared to be highly exculpatory evidence, including phone numbers of people who appear to have been within 60 to 100 yards of the crime scene where Abby and Libby were killed. So for people who don't know, so you may have heard geocaching related to this crime. And it seems like people were talking about that where you kind of use your cell phone to go to certain locations and on a certain app, you kind of collect certain whatever prizes or something like that. I don't know. I don't use it. Geofencing is totally different. I believe it's mostly from Google data where they can kind of like if you look on a map, like on a Google Maps, like say we're looking for who was at the crime scene, whatever, from like noon to 5 p.m. on the day of the murders on Ron Logan's property north of the creek. So law enforcement would like make a rectangle or a square for a certain area that they want Google or some kind of phone data company to sh show, like, do you have any data showing what phone numbers were in this location on a certain day, on a certain time. So that's what uh, geofencing is. For some of you who don't know, I've mentioned this previously, Google like two months ago said they will no longer be giving geofencing data to law enforcement, which has been a very uh, fairly helpful tool for law enforcement. We'll find out if it was helpful in this case. So this geofencing data included a map of the movements of these people who were supposedly at the crime scene the afternoon um, of December, that was an error by uh, whoever filed this, Baldwin. It should have been on February 13th, 2017, the day of the murders, including between 3.02 p.m. and 3.27 p.m. at or very near the location where the bodies were found, but none of the phones were Rick's. So Tom wrote, did Rick have a burner phone? Approximately 16 phones were taken from Rick's home on the October 13th, 2022 search. So a few weeks ago, February 26, Baldwin and Rosie asked McClelland to provide all documents related to the geofencing data, but McClelland so far claimed no documents exist. It would be shocking that law enforcement would make a map tracking the movements of phones around the crime scene between 12.39 p.m. and 5.49 p.m. on February 13th, but not follow up with detailed reports. So when I read that, I thought, well, Rick said he was there for another 50 minutes after 1239, if his noon to 130 timeline is correct. So why didn't his phone with his stock ticker show up in the data? From the 2017 narrative to the conservation officer, it says that he was looking at his phone and basically uh, looking at a stock ticker, which seemed to me like he was kind of in indicating like, oh, I didn't see anybody because I was looking down at my phone as I walked on this trail. But to me, 
that trail is so narrow. It's like you can't walk past somebody and not see them, even if you're looking down at your phone. So there's four items down here. So A, Walden and Rosie deposed the state's phone expert who presumably will testify at the trial concerning the data on Liberty's phone. B, before that deposition, Walden and Rosie emailed McClelland on February 26th, um, a few weeks ago, seeking reports related to the phone dump to prepare for said deposition of that phone expert. C, McClelland said there were no reports. D, minutes before the deposition began, McClelland handed over two to three pages of notes the state's phone expert made, providing Walden and Rosie zero time to review or meet with its own expert in order to learn what questions would be wise to ask the state's expert. I agree with the defense, that's it's unacceptable. It's like they need to be able to uh, prepare for these depositions. And why is this information that's literally over seven years old taking almost a year and, and a half to turn over? Continue with the same uh, filing. We're on slide eight, I think about, I have 22 total, so there's, 14 more to go. McClellan provided the names of four people that may be called as a state's expert witness on geofencing, but nowhere have Bald and Rosie located any documents from any of those four experts. So I thought, why is McClellan calling four geofencing experts in a trial trying to show that Rick is the killer if they have data that shows other people and not Rick were near the bodies from 3 to 3.30? Why didn't the defense name these Odinists, BH, PW, and EF, as the owners of those phone numbers near the crime scene? Wouldn't you think they would have if it belonged to them? If they're saying, the defense has said previously, they have significant evidence that BH and PW were involved in the murders. Why isn't there data showing Rick's phone at home until around 3.40, sorry, 11.45 a.m., at the trails until 1.30, and then home or somewhere far away from the crime scene after 1.30. We'll have to wait for the trial to get some of these clarifications. There are no interviews of the people who own the phones near the crime scene, which that's not acceptable. Walden and Rosie asked McClelland to identify the Purdue professor whose findings thwarted investigative efforts to look into Odinism as being involved in the murders. According to Holman, who's with the Indiana State Police, the Purdue professor concluded the sticks on the girls did not represent, quote, Odinism or any type of cult worshiping or any type of a group that would have committed the crime, end quote. So that was um, Holman's quote about the professor. Law enforcement and McClelland said they couldn't remember the professor's name for at least another month. His name and reports should have been provided to Bald and Rosie no later than December 14th, 2022. I agree with that. In a report Bald and Rosie got in last month, February, Holman learned the identity of the Purdue professor around or on August 12th, and had his report which uh, and had his report which contradicted Holman's August 10th testimony. So it said that um, Holman had the Purdue professor's report um, by that time. So they're saying that Holman lied during his August 10th deposition by the defense. The state intentionally violated the discovery order due to their attempt to hide the identity of an exculpatory witness, the Purdue professor, who, according to Holman and Liggett, altered the way the case was investigated when they said, he said, um, the sticks on Abby and Libby were not related to Odinism. So apparently law enforcement did not really pursue the Odinism angle. Holman interviewed the Purdue professor on September 19th of 2023 the day after the Franks memo came out, and Holman's report memorializing his meeting with the Purdue professor is filled with falsehoods and mischaracterizations concerning his conversation with the Purdue professor. Number one, in what appears to be an attempt to water down the Purdue professor's opinion that, quote, it was a given. So this is what um, the Purdue professor said, quote, it was a given that someone, AKA the killer at the crime scene, was trying to replicate a Germanic runic script, end quote. But Holman memorialized the professor's conclusions as inconclusive. Two, despite how Holman drafted his report, the professor's conclusions were not inconclusive. He was clear 
that in his opinion, and that of a Harvard expert who is also in, uh, knowledgeable about Germanic runic script and stuff, the sticks were, were an attempt to replicate a Germanic rune script. A rune is like kind of like a symbol or a letter for this old ass um, <laughs> language. Um, the only thing the professor could not say for certain was the intended meaning of the persons who left the runic script at the crime scene. So my thought is, so did the professor identify which rune was left on each girl? We know that there, there were three branches apparently on Abby's body and four branches on Libby's body. So if I'm a member of the jury and the defense is going to try and convince me that Odinists or somebody related to Odinism killed Abby and Libby and then put these branches in a certain order, I'm going to need the defense to show the picture of their bodies and show a picture of exactly which rune was on which girl. Three, Holman also attempted to deceive when he wrote the professor stated no evidence indicated those involved in Odinism, quote unquote, practices ritualistic human sacrifices, end quote. So I added, when was the last ritualistic sacrifice of a human or white person by Odinists or white supremacists? Baldwin and Rosie started the Franks memo, quote, members of a pagan Norse religion called Odinism, hijacked by white nationalists, ritualistically sacrificed Abigail Williams and Liberty German, end quote. And we know that um, Labrado, who was a temporary attorney for Rick for two months or so, well, Bald and Rosie took a vacation. Kidding, calm down. Um, Labrado said that one of the girls was sacrificed, and he believed that Rick is 100% innocent and not involved at all. So what did Labrado see that pointed towards a ritualistic sacrifice of at least one of the girls, and why not the other? Number four, Holman chose, chose not to include the professor's actual words that he, quote, could certainly imagine that this was somebody's idea that when you do human sacrifices, you carve runes. There are some poetic sources that would sort of support that idea that somebody might have come across. That scenario seemed entirely plausible to me. So Tom said, from when? Nobody's written a poem since the 1600s. Like, let's get real. So if the professor is saying there are some poetic sources, like, is he talking from the 1500s, like 1600s, 1700s, 1800s? Like, I have not really seen any evidence that there are modern Odinists who are killing white girls. Number five, Holman attempted to deceive by implying the professor totally disregarded the possibility of the involvement of human sacrifice. That is not what the professor said. So I added, well, the professor wasn't totally convincing from what was released in making the case that Abby and Libby were ritualistically sacrificed by white nationalists. And also like the branches, he didn't say which rune was on which girl. I don't know, maybe he did in the report, but it's never been released. And I would think the defense would have included that. Although I think at the time of the Frank's memo, they said they still have not received the professor's report, which as I said, it's unacceptable that that took so long. McClelland never turned over the Purdue report Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I just said. Finally, I'm right about something. McClellan never turned over the Purdue professor's report until October 4th, 10 months after it was due. As I said, it's unacceptable that it took that long when it was probably written in 2017. Other evidence the state has failed to produce. A, the faked crime scene image found on BH's Facebook. So BH is the initials of one of these main Odinists that Waldo and Rosie say they have significant, significant evidence they are involved in the murders. The defense had to travel to Georgia to retrieve a copy of that image. Tom said, does somebody not have email? The state has not turned over a copy while having to admit in deposition testimony that it is real and was found on BH's Facebook within weeks of the murders. Again, not sure why that's taking so long. Video of a ritual in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh-oh, here comes my curse. Video of a ritual in Fort Wayne, Indiana, involving these two owners, B.H. and P.W., in which P.W. can be seen 
marking a tree using his hand at a similar height on that tree as the F was found on the tree at the crime scene with Libby's blood uh, used, used to write um, the F. Tom wrote, BS, PW was reaching up to eight feet and the defense admitted in the Frank's memo Libby's blood was around four feet. So I agree that the defense has some very valid complaints here about turning over evidence and maybe certain things pointing towards Odinus, but they lose total credibility from me when they make these stupid comments, which to me is just like a flat out lie. PW is this guy here in the blue shirt. There's a mugshot that states he is six foot six tall reaching as high as he can. So this is what the defense is referring to. This is a screen capture from this, I believe it was um, September of 2016, a few months before the murders. There was one of these like pagan ceremonies at this park in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where both BH and PW attended. And PW later gave an interview on the YouTube channel Sleuth Intuition. And he said he was putting like a coin or something in this tree high enough up I don't know, something like where animals or somebody could not remove it. And he's kind of like making a, I don't know, I don't want to say like false stuff, but he's kind of like, I don't know, doing some kind of blessing at the park. I don't know. I don't remember every fact. So to me, a six foot six guy reaching up here is approximately eight feet. Down here is like four feet. So in addition, this is um, from the Frank's memo from the defense wrote this. In addition to the unusual way the girls were posed, including the stick formations placed on their bodies, another unusual marking was found on a nearby tree. A symbol that looked similar to the letter F appeared approximately four feet above the base of the tree. So I just want people who read this to know the truth is that the defense is saying this man who they say is involved in the murders of Abby and Libby was reaching at the same height, which you can make your own decision Good luck. Moving along. Uh, this is still continued. After finding references to that ritualistic video in an email from Ferency to Liggett, Liggett is obviously the Carroll County Sheriff who investigated, I guess was one of the lead detectives. The defense had to ask for that video, but Tom wrote, it's been on BH's public Facebook for seven years. The video, um, that's all I had to say. The video was finally received on or about September 8th, 2023, around 10 months after the prosecutor was required to turn it over to the defense. They gave the ritual video and Odinist interviews of these four other Odinists, EF, JM, RA, that's not Richard Allen, somebody else, and NS. These four guys are the ones from the Rushville area, about two hours away from Delphi, that the defense and apparently, well, the defense is mostly getting their Odinist evidence from this uh, Ferency Click Murphy report, the three law enforcement officers who investigated these Odinists and said they felt like they were involved in the murders. I'm just wondering, did these three officers have access to all of the evidence that the Unified Command had? Because obviously we're seeing the Unified Command wasn't really organized with their evidence. So how much did they turn over to Ferency Click and Murphy? Law enforcement and McClelland continue to hide evidence from the defense and do so without concern of any consequences from Gull. Ball and Rosie filed a motion for early trial for several reasons, including concern for Rick's safety and mental and physical health, but are concerned the prosecution continue to violate discovery rules. As I said a few minutes ago, I don't I agree with the defense that it's unacceptable to be taking this long to turn over important evidence. Walter and Rosie request Gull compel McClelland and law enforcement to turn over all relevant evidence by next Monday, March 18th, including all reports about the deleted February 13th to 20, I'm uh, sorry, February 13th to the 20th, 2017 interviews, including BH and PW, and how audio is missing in other videos. So I need a drink. Hold on. About a month ago or so, it was revealed that there's apparently some problem at the Delphi Police Department interview room where the first week of the murders before that, I guess they moved, they moved over to like the command center at Carroll County Sheriff's or something. 
law enforcement was doing these interviews of people at the Delphi Police Department interview room. I don't know exactly how their setup works. Some people say certain of these rooms, you have to like turn, push a button as you enter to start recording. And as you leave, you have to push a button or possibly just on the camera itself. So at some point, maybe as late as um, August or September of that year, law enforcement realized the first week of interviews that they conducted had been written over because somebody left the video recorder going on for a day or more. Yeah, not good. Yeah, so that's a whole nother issue where the defense wanted to see the videotaped interviews of these two Odinists um, to con uh, compare their initial statements to more recent statements. Although PW apparently was interviewed at home uh, in the first week, but also this February 13th to the 20th, we know that witness four gave, she met with a sketch artist with, within the first few days. So was her interview also deleted? A sketch artist, another, this is another issue and not with um, witness four, I don't think. A sketch artist met a lady and then sketched a male figure or suspect, I guess, that she saw on the trails. But Bald and Rosie don't have this sketch or interviews or reports about whatever she discussed. So yeah, this is not witness four. The defense made some errors uh, referencing these family members. All of Derek German's interviews they want. The defense wants all of Kelsey German's uh, phone dumps and interviews, which that's obviously Libby's sister who dropped them off at the trails. All of Cody Patty's phone dumps and interviews. He is the adopted son of uh, Libby's grandparents who lived at the house also. Libby's 205 and 207 images, which you've all seen them, the full um, bridge video, or sorry, full bridge photo that Libby posted to Snapchat, plus the other one of Abby on the bridge. Interviews and reports of anyone who got those pictures on Snapchat, all documents about the two photos. I think this might be the last one of this filing. For anybody joining, I, mean, I, I have about seven more PowerPoint slides and I'll get to the comments in the chat. All re they, uh, the defense also wants uh, turned over by next Monday, the 18th, all reports and documents, including phone dumps from any phone or electronic device believed to be Abby's and Libby's used near the Monon High Bridge. And that was identified as a victim phone that is different than Libby's phone. So people are wondering, was there another phone at the crime scene? Did Abby have a phone, which I'll get to that in two more um, PowerPoint bullet points. Law enforcement wants all emails between the Purdue professor and law, uh, sorry, the defense wants all emails between the Purdue professor and law enforcement. They want everything related to geofencing data and the people identified and interviewed. The identity of the person or persons, presumably law enforcement, that labeled a second phone as quote unquote geofence victim that was not the phone belonging to Libby. And who did that phone belong to is what the defense wants to know. And I wrote here, did uh, Abby have a phone? Her mom said she did not, but we know that children don't always tell the truth. The identity of the person who made the geofence map of the various people who were near the crime scene, I guess between around the time of the murders. All reports of all leak investigations not related to the Mitch Westerman leak investigations, which is where Mitch Westerman took a photo of Abby and Libby's dead bodies at the crime scene and then sent it to that other guy who sent it to somebody else and so on and so on. So the uh, Baldwin and Rosie also want to include any reports made by McClelland of content providers reaching out to him claiming they were in possession of leaked information and which McClelland then ordered the content provider to delete the images. All right, that, so that was the end of that one. There's a few more that were filed yesterday and then I'll get to your comments. Again, these were all by the defense yesterday. Objection to change of venue. So David Hennessy started, whatever, representing Baldwin and Rosie around the time they started arguing with Judge Gall. <laughs> so Hennessy, this attorney, stated uh, that Ball and Rosie object to the contempt hearing moving from Carroll to Allen County 
stating no one asked it to be moved from Carroll County. Walden and Rosie did ask to move Rick's case out of Carroll County about a year or uh, over a year ago, but Hennessy seems to be referring to the March 18th contempt hearing only. So that was, it was kind of short. Next up is a verified petition for recusal of prosecutor Nick McClelland from next Monday's uh, contempt proceedings. Anybody wondering? Yes, I am doing a live chat next Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. I already scheduled it if you want to look at your local time. So the summary of this filed by the defense. On January 29th, McClelland filed a verified information of contemptuous conduct, basically saying that Walden and Rosie acted inappropriately. All of the alleged acts are more than a year old, but McClelland never cared enough to file until the day after Walden and Rosie were reinstated, and it indicates a personal attack. So after the Supreme Court said Gull was wrong for terminating or removing Walden and Rosie, that's when McClelland said, we're filing some charges against them. It does not comport with the rules, statutes, and case law regarding contempt proceedings. McClelland accessed, read, and quoted a defense pleading that was filed ex parte. So for people who don't know what ex parte is, join the club. Because, But the basic um, idea, I think, is if something is filed ex parte by the defense, the prosecutor should not be able to even see anything in it. So I wrote here, should have been hidden from McClelland. McClelland stated that um, Baldwin should have communicated his accidental email to Brandon Woodhouse, yet McClelland did not voluntarily report he accessed an ex parte pleading. McClelland communicated with a person that had confidential info, which they publicly disseminated and claimed who their sources were, but McClelland did not report that or direct anyone to investigate it whereas he did report and ask them to investigate the Mitch Westerman leak and possibly other leaks by the defense. Prior to filing for a contempt, McClelland had not received or reviewed all of the results and interviews related to his accusations. McClelland was at unrecorded conferences with Gull that impact his allegations and will be part of evidence at any contempt hearing. McClelland uh, will be called as a witness at any contempt hearing but he has not withdrawn as the counsel. Uh, this is something totally different. Also filed yesterday by the defense. Motion for specific findings of fact and conclusions thereon. The summary is Indiana Trial Rule 52A provides that upon the written request of any party filed with the court prior to the admission of evidence in a case where issues are tried without a jury, the court shall find the facts specially and state its conclusions thereon. So um, this March 18th hearing is not going to be before a jury or anything. Baldwin and Rosie request Gull issue findings of fact and conclusions regarding the contempt proceeding scheduled for hearing next Monday, the 18th. For anybody who's also wondering on next Monday, which I'm more interested about this one than this contempt thing, Two months ago, on January 18th, McClelland filed these four new charges against Rick. The first two were like kind of felony murder, where they were kind of insinuating that Rick was bridge guy who said, go down the hill, which qualifies as kidnapping Abby and Libby, which obviously they ended up dead. So he was saying, since Rick was bridge guy who said that he should be at least held accountable for them eventually being murdered. But I believe these four new charges that were filed two months ago say that Rick was the actual killer and not just bridge guy. So is McClelland going to present new evidence that we have not heard yet that back up um, those um, upgraded charges? If, I don't know if they're considered upgraded or not, but I guess we'll find out Monday. This last one is verified petition for recusal of Judge Gull from the contempt proceedings on Monday. The summary is on October 8th, 2023, Gull inquired about law enforcement's investigation of a leak and offered to use contempt power she did not have, which gave rise to the appearance of a lack of neutrality. Gull told Ball and Rosie to cooperate with the investigation, which they did. Gull received information concerning the leak 
that may or may not be admissible in a contempt proceeding. Recusal is appropriate to avoid the possibility she is considering events outside the evidence presented next Monday. Well, they need to decide quick because Monday's coming up soon. Without having reviewed the document sent in an accidentally misdirected email, Gull expressed judgment it was an egregious error, showing she has prejudged the contempt allegation. So I wrote, why haven't Baldwin and Rosie given Gull the document in the 15 months since Baldwin sent it to Woodhouse if it was harmless? I know it's considered defense work product, and maybe some people will write in the chat that Gull should not have access to it, but if you have access to e uh, Facebook or YouTube, you saw what it included. And I've said previously that I can understand that, I mean, autofill on an email, it's easy to make that mistake. So I'm not saying that Baldwin is totally incompetent or he did it on purpose, but I've previously said Brandon Woodhouse, obviously his first name starts B-R-A and the other attorney, Rosie, is Brad, who his first name starts B-R-A. So I said, well, if, uh, Baldwin started typing B-R-A for Rosie to send this document, which is essentially, I think, a list of folders and topics of evidence that they received from the prosecution. But I was looking and saw, and I saw that Rosie's email starts at B-R-O, not B-R-A. Not that it makes a huge difference. I don't know, but I just wanted to clarify that. Gull criticized Baldwin and Rosie and coerced them into withdrawing for that conduct, including like sending that email to Woodhouse. There is at least the appearance Gull has prejudged McClellan's contempt allegations. Um, this is continued. Baldwin and Rosie will present evidence that YouTuber Fig Solves claimed to have received and disseminated confidential documents from an employee of the court. I don't know if it means Allen County Court or Carroll County Court. He wrote Gull, um, Figsalls wrote to Gull, denying allegations that have not yet even been made by the defense. Gull should not be ruling on the admissibility of Baldwin and Rosie's evidence. McClelland accessed an ex parte filing that was confidential. Okay, so this actually says, oh, that's something different, sorry. The Carroll County Clerk's Office confirmed the ex parte pleading was only shared with Baldwin, Rosie, and the court. One of the court staff thought a, thought a confidential filing, aka ex parte, applied only to the public and not McClellan. So apparently this person who works at the court thought anything that says ex parte just means that it should be hidden from all of us nosy people, but that McClellan should have access to it. It appears McClellan's access to an ex parte ple pleading was enabled by the court's staff, whether due to improper training or ignorance, the court should not preside over any contempt hearing, which, I mean, I agree, like, McClellan's a attorney. He has to know that ex parte means he should not be opening it. But then, so this ex, ex parte thing that we're, they're talking about, a few of them have been filed by the defense over the past year and a half. And McClellan wrote in some kind of filing, I've had access to all of the ex parte filings be before. So maybe about a month ago, Baldwin and Rosie filed an ex parte confidential request to Judge Gull saying they want funding to talk to, I think, like a psychiatrist or something, um, and also somebody, a medical or mental health professional, to talk about the effects of somebody being in solitary confinement and how that may have affected Rick's April 3rd phone call to his wife where he made whatever admissions of killing Abby and Libby. I lost my train of thought, sorry. I'm sure it wasn't a good thought, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I lost it, anyway. Gull appears to have prejudged almost all of the contempt allegations against Baldwin and Rosie. The involvement of the court's staff will now also be the subject of any contempt hearing. Under the totality of these circumstances, the court cannot appear to be a neutral, or whatever, and should to be neutral, and should recuse from those contempt hearings next Monday. All right, this is the last one, I think. And maybe the second or the most important one. So this is filed by the defense, David Hennessy. Motion to stay all ancillary proceedings and get this case to trial. 
which seems to be a reference to the Chief Justice of the Indiana Supreme Court, known as the ISC, not the SCOIN Shibby. Um, I said Shibby, not S H I T T Y. So the the Supreme Court Justice of Indiana Supreme Court at that January 18th hearing says we want this case to get back on track to trial. So this filing yesterday, March 18th contempt hearing, Baldwin and Rosie filed to dismiss it, but the state hopes to punish Baldwin and Rosie. The contempt hearing has required many hours of prepar prepar hello? preparation, and the hearing will last at least one day, possibly two. This is a distraction from preparation for a trial 61 days away, and it is also a disservice to the families involved. Any issues could be litigated and resolved after trial, which I totally agree with that. At this point, I'm like, can we focus on the trial and Abby and Libby and even giving Rick Allen a fair trial? We'll see what happens. In short, the court and the attorneys need to get back to the critical issues and stop the diver di diversionary filings. Baldwin and Rosie want Gull to stay, which I guess means to postpone all ancillary proceedings, which means all this BS about everybody arguing and not really focusing on the facts of the case. Delay all these proceedings not directly re related to the charges against Rick and the murder charges. Evidence for trial or other trial issues. All right, finally. <laughs> oh. That took 45 minutes. All right, sorry, everybody. Let me go back and see what you've been all talking about. I'm just looking for some of your comments, but I'm kind of behind. <laughs> I'm starting 45 minutes behind. Uh, let's see. Hi to everybody joining. I'm, I'm getting through all the highs. Sorry, I'm just, let me just scroll past. Sorry, I'm, there's a lot of comments that really aren't really talking about <laughs> something to highlight. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this. So under all of my Delphi live chats, I put a link to donate to the Abbey and Libby Memorial Park. So Indie Archive is a YouTube channel that has a lot of drone footage of Delphi. And so for people wondering what the Delphi Abbey and Libby Memorial Park are, this is what it looks like. Kids go to play softball there and there are some concerts over on the side there. So I just wanted to at least show this for the first time. So if you want to donate, you can um, look down the link below to the Abbey and Libby Memorial Park. For people who are nosy, wondering how much I've donated, I gave $200 to the Abbey and Libby Memorial Park I gave 100 each to the Abby Williams Scholarship Fund, 100 to the Libby Jeremy, hello, Liberty German Scholarship Fund. And then I gave, they were doing these pavers, like these bricks for the um, park. So I bought two of those at $100 each. Not that I'm looking to, I'm just saying, because people are like, oh, you make money off of murdered children. Anyway, there we go. SP, 74, hi. So 18 pages of more requests for discovery that might exist, this time trying to get the state to delay the speedy trial in hopes of releasing Richard Allen. Yeah, there's some rule. rule. So once they file this um, request for speedy trial within 70 days, if certain things don't happen, Rick would be released from custody. We'll see what happens. Sorry, I'm just looking for some comments to highlight. Hi, Angel Ray. Um, Ferency is one of these three people who investigated Odinus. 
So Angel said, and Ferenc, he was killed by a prison guard. Is that true? It was a like, it was a former prison guard who apparently had some issues against the government. He threw like a Molotov cocktail at this FBI building, and Ferenc was one of the people who walked out. And this guy killed and shot Ferenc, who was one of the three people who did the Odinist report. I do not think it was like some kind of Delphi-related Odinist um, killing. High art of deduction. Geofencing is cell phone data that is made upon awareness of the distance of a ping of the cell phone. All right, thank you. Hi, KT. Nice to see you. Hi, Mike. Mike says they also have five confessions, slam dunk, replying to four pit bulls. Stay tuned. We'll have to wait for the trial to find out what Rick has been saying in Westville and I guess maybe Wabash too. Hi, Shane. Shane Googled geofencing and the main heading is it's not accurate. Just saying. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be experts from both sides at the trial. Hi, sweet dude, Chibi. Sending information to defense investigator one way and sending information to Holman and McClelland, whom then send it info back and answer questions is two different things. Shane says the lies on both sides are extremely worrying. It's, it's crazy that we're at this point in the trial, which seems so far away from getting justice for Abby and Libby and to give Rick a fair trial. Hi, digital. McClelland thinks discovery is a TV network. Hi, Roman. This has me nervous as AG double hockey sticks. This is not the time to be sloppy. I said in my seven hour and five minute Frank's memo video, it just seems like law enforcement was so disorganized from the beginning. And I try and like acknowledge that it was a huge like undertaking where at one point they said there were up to 200 officers from 45 different agencies within the first few days and weeks. So why, I mean, I just want to know like what system were they using to keep track of all this information and all these officers and the information they collected? We know that the FBI Orion system was used at some point, but it doesn't, doesn't seem to be very good at um, collecting information or organizing it. As I said previously, it's like, why was there not one server for this case where as soon as Rick was arrested, as the defense is saying, within 30 days, the de, um, law enforcement and the prosecutor could have said, okay, we had all this, here's all our evidence organized into folders, which I know people are like, you really think Liggett is organizing folders? I, I just, I'm so concerned and curious to know how this investigation was organized. And if it was so disorganized from the beginning for five and a half years, how were they properly organ uh, investigating even before Rick was arrested? I don't know. The, the lack of organization and proper investigations cost Indiana millions of dollars. At least that's if Rick truly was the um, killer or bridge guy. If Rick is not the bridge guy, it really doesn't matter that they never followed up on him. I don't know. Hi, Purdue. Nice to see you. Boiler up. I don't even know what that means. Um, boiler is something to do with Indiana. They're Purdue boiler makers. Purdue is a university, which is where that professor works. Sorry, I'm just looking through these comments where people are having discussions. <laughs> yeah.
USA Libertarian, hello. We always appreciate your diverse opinions. Holman thought the professor said it was a gibbon. So we started looking for monkeys, which gibbon is a t certain type of monkey. I don't know. I want to see what kind of evidence law enforcement did find about these Odinists. We found out a few weeks or months ago that the defense is saying that there were two search warrants for the phone data of BH and PW, which were never actually sent. There were only drafts. We do know that um, the phone data for the Odinist EF was um, found, and the defense does have that. So I don't know what's going on. Hi, Amy. Remember that McCleveland said that he received less discovery back than he had originally sent to Baldwin and Rosie when the defense um, came back and Labrado and Scremen came back, correct? Hi, Humano. Clearly, if Odin and not white supremacists, then white girls would have first picked for sacrifice. A sacrifice is giving up something of value to you. Well, I know that there was a recent case. I think it's the Seattle area. And the headline, not the headline, but maybe it was the headline. Some guy who had been in prison for quite a few years and was, I guess, a follower of Odinism in prison, he got out. And within a few months, he killed somebody over a drug issue. And there was like a woman inside and he killed her too, just because she was there and he would have like, she would, could have identified him. So then a few weeks later, this guy, he had not gone, he had not gotten caught immediately, but he killed a horse as a sacrifice to Odin, which to me is different than a white supremacist killing white girls. Hi, Sparky. Sparky is not believing nothing until court. This case is a disaster. I agree with you on that. Thank you, this account. I appreciate it. And also, Matt, thank you so much. Matt says, if McClellan does not know the meaning of ex parte, he should not prosecute this case. I can't really disagree with you on that. But does he, even if he, does he know the meaning of ex parte and he's doing stuff that he should not be doing? Humanal says, I just want to see in court Proof of where Rick was, his car, how did they ID him on the Hoosier Harvest Store camera at 1.27 p.m. driving in the direction of the uh, CPS parking lot when Rick said he left in the opposite direction at 1.30? What was taken from his house? I'm trying to interpret what she wrote. Energy going into everything except trial, Gur. Yeah, I really, I've not seen any reference to any car data, so... That could have been huge evidence either way to show if Rick was there noon to 1.30 or 1.30 to 4. Or does it exist and the defense is ignoring it because it shows that Rick lied about noon to 1.30? We'll see. Lizbeth, can someone tell me what the numbers in bold type means? I have a one. Those are for my members, and it shows how many months they've been members. Thank you to everybody who's a member. Thank you to all my moderators for babysitting adults who can't <laughs> communicate properly to other people. Sparky says, isn't the defense still guilty of some of the many leaks that have happened? Isn't that what the court will deal with on Monday? So... The contempt hearing is because McCleveland said the defense has done, made some errors and stuff like that. But the defense is now saying, well, the prosecution did the same thing. And it does seem like some, some people in law enforcement have been saying things over the seven years since the murders happened. And even in the past few months. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what is presented at Monday's hearing. It is not going to be televised or streamed online. Hi, this account. Uh, this account says, this is all through the lens of the defense. We shall see. Yeah. KT, does it say the height of PW reaching? No, in the filing it said 
that he was reaching about the same height as where the F blood was on the tray. I guess that was before I showed my picture, but to me, it definitely seems like he's reaching eight feet high and that's nowhere near four feet. Sweet Dude Shibby references a yellow rope, which I think you're making a joke, but there are rumors that a yellow rope was found at the crime scene. I've said previously that I think Bridge Guy might have like a white rope around his neck area that it seems like there were certain items stuffed into the Bridge Guy's jacket. So we'll have to wait and see what is presented at the trial. I know a lot of us have wondered how could one man, even with a gun, have controlled these two girls and also stab them without the other one like running away. So maybe they, one of them or both were tied to a tree with a rope. I don't know. If so, why would somebody leave their DNA on a rope at the crime scene? Purdue says the proof is Rick said he was there and multiple confessions and markings on unspent shell casing. Hopefully these things will not be kept out of court for technicalities. I hope we hear all the evidence. Yeah. I just want the jury to make the proper decision and be given all of the evidence, both inculpatory and exculpatory, so both in favor and against Rick. So the jury makes the correct decision. So if Rick is guilty, obviously I want him to be found guilty. If he's innocent, I want him to be found innocent. Digital, is it possible that PW was writing or painting on a tree in a different video? That this photo isn't the same one the defense was referencing? No. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm 99% sure I'm correct on this one. SP74, maybe it took so long to collect all the evidence because it was buried in the giant discard pile of leads that went nowhere, like the tip on Bigfoot. Yeah, there were 70 to 80,000 tips in this case, which obviously distracted law enforcement from, from focusing on the first few uh, interviews they did. But I still really want to know, Rick's interview with the conservation officer was um, the 74th tip entered in the FBI Orion system. Why didn't at no point in five and a half years did law enforcement go back to the first 100 tips in Orion and say, did we miss something? Because Holman has said previously in some interview, like our biggest fear is missing something so we go back and check evidence but i don't know what to say human animal the confessions well people don't like it when people say confessions they're admissions of possible guilt mccleveland in a uh, filing said rick admitted several times that he killed Abby and Libby. So call that what you want. Whatever that might be are about the only recordings surviving unless they also get erased, of course. Can you imagine? I, I, I really wanna know, like, is Doug Carter, the head of um, the Indiana State Police, what is being done or what has been done to investigate this investigation to learn from their mistakes? because their mistakes have caused like so many issues. And it seems like no offense to people in Indiana, <laughs> actually people in Indiana say, no, it is true. It just seems like nobody follows proper procedures, like the judge, the prosecutor, the defense attorneys, law enforcement. I don't know what to say. Four pit bulls, if anyone wants to donate donuts, you can send it to McClelland in Delphi. High criminality. I believe it has been said in motions by both sides that there was no recording of PW to erase. I believe you're correct. Somebody said that PW was only um, interviewed, I think within the first few days to maybe say, or to find out if his, ch his four children either knew Abby and Libby or something like that. Not that he was in a uh, suspect, like an Odinous suspect. And P so like, yeah, he, um, PW has four children. 
and I don't think PW is working. So who was watching his kids when he was at the crime scene? Are his children going to be on the, uh, whatever the witness stand saying, yes, my father was home with me on the day of the murder. So what does that do to the defense's accusations that PW was involved and BH was apparently he checked out 30 minutes away at his landfill job at 2 45 PM bridge guy was captured at 2 13 PM. I don't know. I have to take a drink and, um, Gen X rando. Yes. Tom went to Popeye's Louisiana chicken. It's not that good. I prefer Kentucky fried chicken. Like anybody cares. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about this. Digital says, and the Hoosier Harvester video, hopefully it's still intact. Yes, it better be. Um, so I want to know if Rick said he went there to the trails, noon to 1.30, which route did he say he took? So if he said he took um, whatever route it takes to go past Hoosier Harvester camera, we know law enforcement has said on that Hoosier Harvester video, they saw... Rick's car at 127, witness four at 146, Kelsey at 149, some guy at 228 who said he saw a smart car at CPS, a dark smart car, and the 357 driver. So that's five people. So if Rick said, yeah, I took the longest of three ways to CPS from my house, law enforcement knows if his car was seen at around 12 arriving or around 1 30 leaving i don't know i'm very interested to know if they asked him which route he took and what did he say and why has the prosecution and defense not referenced any other video either proving either of the different timelines Criminality, I was talking about some lady did a sketch, but not witness for it. I believe that is the Mike Patty sketch, which is uh, Libby's grandfather, which would not be considered evidence, so it would not be turned over. Well, if somebody's saying they saw somebody, isn't the prosecution supposed to turn over everything? Oh, yeah, so SP-74. PW was interviewed by the YouTube channel Sleuth Intuition at his home, and it was not recorded. All right, thank you. Hi, Diana. What is that emoji? The Delphi Circus, oh my God, <laughs> is always in town at the police department. Thank you for your emojis. Hi, rescue all the dogs. Shouldn't you be rescuing dogs and not chatting? Yeah, Humano, I want to see all the footage since noon. So my last live chat I showed, I'm not going to show it again. Should I show it again? Um, I deleted it. Give me one second. I'm actually going to do this. Give me one second. For people who did not know, because previously I've said a lot of things. Um, actually, I might not be able to show this. Previously, I said, how many cars in Delphi are similar to Rick's that could be on this uh, 127 Hoosier Harvestar camera? Because Rick's car is a black, it kind of has a weird um, shape, the Ford Focus. Sorry, like this isn't too awkward. Um, so I said, how many other cars are in Delphi with this? Yeah, I'm not, this isn't looking too good. <laughs> Wait, I want to show this to people who haven't seen it. Yeah, I can't find it. I deleted it. Um, but you can find it. So if you want to see this other car that ma not does not match Rick's, but it's kind of similar, go to Google Maps, search the CVS in Delphi, go to Street View, and it shows a September 2022, um, like a drive-by photo of the CVS in Delphi where Rick worked. And it's a black car backed into the same spot that Rick sometimes parked at, which is another photo that I've shown. So my point is saying there is another car in Delphi, at least in September 2022, 
which is all black and has all black tires and hubcaps. We were trying to figure out in the previous chat what kind of car that was and was it made before or after 2017. And people said it seemed to be like a 2020 GMC Acadia or something like that. So this car may not have even been in Delphi in February 2017. But I just wanted to clarify, since I previously said or gave the indication that I doubted anybody else in town had that same similar black car with black hubcaps. I agree for Pitbulls, all this stuff should have been given a year ago if it was properly organized during the investigation. Digital, am I understanding the original Bridge Guide video has not been given to the defense? I don't think they have said that. It was just the two photos from 205 and 207. Which I guess they wanted to get the original data, even though those images are available online. Hi, Babu's Frick. I was going to say Freak. I always want to say Freak. You're probably a Freak in the sheets. I'm kidding. <laughs> are you telling me we can have a nuanced conversation about all this without licking or licking? You are a Freak. Picking a side and being ridiculous about it. Yes, I hope my chats are somewhere where everybody can share their different opinions without acting like clowns. Hi, Mariah. I'm your biggest fan. Digital said, if the uh, iCloud data doesn't prove from what device the photo or video originated from, it would be very beneficial. Anyway, I don't think I've ever seen that Libby's video was um, uploaded to iCloud. Was it only taken directly from her phone? I don't know if she, we know that she reset her phone about seven to 10 days prior. I don't know if she had an iCloud or if she reset it or was connected or not. What was I wondering? Um, because if they, she had an iCloud, couldn't, we know that Kelsey, I think, accessed on an iPad Libby's Instagram the night of the murders before they were found. So couldn't Kelsey have looked on Libby's iCloud and found the Bridge Guy video on the night of uh, the 13th? I'm not sure. It does. Obviously, it seems like that did not happen. This account, why no exculpatory phone for Rick? Also, they said the phones near the scene were not related to Alan. So how do they know that much? Yeah, I'm very interested to see what kind of phone data they found for Rick. And not just about where he was that day, but was there any kind of like inappropriate images that would kind of indicate that he, this is some kind of like sexual motive that he wanted to carry out? Oh my God. When Tom's live, the vacuum waits. Sorry, I'm not frozen. I'm looking for different comments. Hi, blessings galore. They are saying Rick was the one stating down the hill on the audio, false. Well, yeah, law enforcement is saying Rick was bridge guy and they're also now saying he's the killer. So I really wanna know if on Monday when they review these four, nor four new charges against Rick, is McClelland going to present some kind of evidence that shows that those four charges are warranted? Is there going to be another like PCA that's released that's going to trigger everybody? Digital says, if the FBI has evidence from a concurrent investigation, would they be required to give it up? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if anybody replied to you who's more knowledgeable than me. Four Pitbulls is saying, how do you get to prosecute things you are involved in? Well, that's what the defense is saying, but they better hurry up and decide. I, I doubt Gull is going to say, I'm going to recuse myself unless she's so sick of all these people. And <laughs> she's like, send it to somebody else. USA Libertarian says, exactly, zero prosecutors do this unless they can use it to hamstring their opponents. Well, pe some people say that McClelland is scared of Baldwin and Rosie, and then when Labrado and Scremmon were, whatever, assigned for two months, people wondered, like, would they be fighting for Rick as much as Baldwin and Rosie, which it seems like Labrado said he thought Rick is innocent. I don't know, like, what do people think? Like, McClellan's going to just try to get rid of every defense attorney until he finds somebody who he thinks he can beat? I mean, either, to me, it's like either the evidence and the facts show Rick is innocent or guilty. So I don't know how much it really matters that who the hell is presenting the evidence either way. I'm sure everybody's disagreeing right now. Hi, not D.B. Cooper. That's not what they're saying. They're saying Judge Gull said they were egregious error, but at the time she did not have full context of what was sent to Woodhouse. She got a copy eventually. All right, I didn't read it that way, but okay. Let's see. Yeah, just be respectful or moderators, just click somebody's name and write hide for channel or click hide for channel. Say bye bye to the trolls. Yeah, I don't know a lot about anything, obviously, or legal cases. So Libertarian says, when have you heard of a prosecutor rather than a judge initiating a contempt charge? I don't know either way. Hi, Susan. Thank you. Babu's freak. Doesn't ex parte mean the defense does not have to let the prosecution know? Does a state prosecution can't see it? Legit question. Yeah, it seems like ex parte means the prosecutor should not even see the contents of the filing. So why is McClellan seeing a filing that says ex parte in the headline and reading it and also referencing it? Oh, I think I was maybe saying this before. This is the thought that I lost. I found it. The ex parte initial thing was to hire a psychiatrist or somebody to say, they didn't exactly say this, but essentially my assumption is to say that Rick's April 3rd phone call to his wife was because he has had some mental issues due to being in solitary confinement for whatever. At that point, it's like five months. So McClelland then filed a motion, his third request to Judge Gull, asking for Rick's mental health records at both Westville and Wabash prison. And in the filing, McClelland said he referenced reading the ex parte filing. And then like a day later, he filed to withdraw that motion because it's like, yeah, you're really not supposed to even be seeing the ex parte motion. Hi, Tiff Knox. People are talking about chat GPT. Oh, how far behind am I? I don't even know. What? Uh, a half hour. <laughs> Hi, Hard Candy. Totally great. Let's just get it to trial. All this contempt stuff and arguing between the judge, the attorneys, the prosecutors, like, it's just so crazy. Just wait until after the trial and then punish people. I don't know. Hi, seven days at sea. I feel like this early trial move is a strategy. Well, I referenced before, there does seem to be some kind of issue where if a certain like stuff does not happen in time, Rick should be 
re, uh, allowed to leave custody. Yeah, but a lot of people, hi, Al on the prowl. If this case goes to trial in May, perhaps Santa is real. I don't know. I, I just think of the families of Abby and Libby often. It's like, it's been seven years. Either the facts exist or not that Rick is bridge guy and involved. Why can't the trial just happen and all this other nonsense either be delayed or go away or whatever? It's crazy. Hi, Priscilla. I am wondering how big of a staff McClelland has compared to Baldwin and Rosie, and how is the information from ISP, FBI, local police organized? Big mistakes on both sides. Well, I know that McClelland was asking for like a clerical assistant, I think. Um, a lot of us know Shane Evans was the former mayor. He then, I guess he was a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. And then he went to work at the prosecutor's office. So he's maybe like the second prosecutor in charge behind um, McClelland. I think somebody said that Shane Evans is running for a judge in Carroll County. So maybe McClelland's going to lose another prosecutor. But I agree with you, Priscilla. Obviously not good organization of the evidence for year after year. But I stated previously that the defense or somebody or the prosecution said there was 29 or sorry, 26 terabytes of information, which I looked online. And obviously it's not all just pages of like PowerPoints or whatever, um, or PDFs. But it's online, it said approximately 26 terabytes is 169 million pages of whatever evidence. So I'm not acting like it wasn't an insane amount of uh, evidence that should have been easy to collect, but still, it seems ridiculous that they were not organized. Hi, FP. I wonder why no one Rick went to school with has talked about him as a kid. Other than the bar owner at JC's bar who said that Rick, Rick's voice did not match bridge guys. I have not seen anybody from Rick's life really stick up for him, which I don't really, do you really blame anybody? Does anybody want to be associated with this case and giving whatever? <laughs> as I'm talking on a live chat. I'm just trying to, whatever, present a forum for people to discuss their thoughts. Amy says, their contempt of court procedure has to be followed. If the judge decides there were punitive damages, maybe they could get their fines or a day in jail after the trial is over. Imagine Baldwin going to Carroll County Sheriff's Jail with Brandon Woodhouse. Yeah, Brandon Woodhouse is still in jail. He's waiting for some trial for, I think, uh, maybe drug-related or also resisting arrest, something like that. Yeah, this is a good point. <laughs> Digital says, what the heck is Latrell doing? Jim Latrell is the former prosecutor from a different Indiana County who has been supposedly helping Rick. So how does he also not know that McClelland is not supposed to be accessing these ex parte filings? Hi, Bianca. I think Gull is saying, or sorry, Bianca saying that Gull denies every motion filed by the defense without a hearing. Hi, Frankie Figs. Art of deduction using chat GPT. Latin term, I think you're talking about ex parte. Latin term meaning literally from or out of the party faction of, thus signifying on behalf of. An ex parte decision is one decided by a judge without requiring all the parties to be present. Yeah, so Gull has had these hearings previously. I think the defense asked for an expert on what, like the tool mark stuff to kind of go against 
law enforcement saying that Rick's unspent round was found two feet from the girls. So I think that was like last June or something. FP says, I can't take anything Baldwin and Rosie put on paper after that Odinism document, their credibility is shot. How do we know this isn't another work of fiction from their team? Well, all of the evidence, or not all of it, most of it from that 136 page Frank's memo was based on the report of these three officers. It was not stuff that the defense was necessarily making up, although some of their whatever their assumptions to me were off base, way, way off base, but most of it, other than the accusations against the Onus guards at Westville torturing Rick, that fake quote, um, it seems to be based on law enforcement work. But as I said before, how much of the evidence against those Odinists did those three officers have, um, was it as extensive as what the Unified Command had? Hi, Carol. Happy sunset. Hi, Ron Logan is not your bish. The defense really don't want this trial. Well, people are saying the prosecution is scared to go to the trial. As I said, like five minutes ago, it's like, present the evidence, present the opposing point of view and let the jury decide. Uh, let's see. Seven Days at Sea says the defense attorneys never want to go to trial early. Something stinks here. Well, people think McClellan stinks too. Hi, Luna Ray. And everybody else who said hi. <laughs> How, an hour and 27 minutes. I'll go maybe another hour and a half. Shelly says, from what I see, the lies are malicious from the prosecutors. She definitely, uh -oh. <laughs> she D not make D not mistakes, all out lies and Holman and Liggett too. Thank you, Shelly. Angel says, lawyers bend the truth to suit their narrative. It happens all the time. Defense just keep being gifted opportunities by the disorganization, all of the various law enforcement groups. I agree. Hi, Kevin. Aloha. If Kevin is on the jury, he wants Rick to take the stand and answer McClellan's questions. If Rick doesn't, Kevin will fry his butt. I've said that previously and people get so triggered that an innocent person would get on the stand and defend themselves against ac accusations that they killed two little girls. I've said I absolutely would be livid if I was falsely arrested for killing two girls. People get upset saying, well, that's what your lawyers are for. The prosecution can twist words. Okay, well, you sit at the defense table when you're falsely accused of killing kids. Luna says, seems to me an investigation never happened. Well, 169, or 169 million pages of stuff, they did something. Seven Days at Sea says, the defense does not want the jury to hear Rick's voice for that long. Well, I just said, the um, owner of JC's bar where Rick and his wife went to often, which if you've ever seen these photos of Rick playing pool and his wife, this is, that was at JC's bar, which closed, um, whatever during COVID. 
So the owner of JC's bar, when Rick was arrested, it was in the New York Post online. He said, bridge guy's voice did not match Richard Allen's voice. And you would think like somebody who has interacted with Rick often would know, although if you're in a bar, there's music playing and people yelling. So I don't know how often the owner of the bar talked to Rick in a different setting. We'll see what happens. Hi, Danielle. At what point does prosecution mistakes and coincidences stop being mistakes and coincidences and be calm, lies, and intentional interference in fair trial? Who knows what's going to happen over the next few days and weeks? Humanimal, I don't know what she's this thing, but... <laughs> This is why I think it is utter BS that the arrest was made due to the election of Tony Liggett to become sheriff. I guess this is sarcasm. Oh, let's expose how incompetent we all are. We will make an arrest so that our all our crap is exposed. Nope. Yeah. And I've said previously, why would like all of these other law enforcement care that Liggett gets um, elected sheriff? And arresting Rick they never knew what kind of evidence he might have to prove that he was home by 1.30. They didn't know if he if his phone data would show that he was at the trails noon to 1.30, or if he went to whatever McDonald's in Delphi and used his credit card at 1.45, or whatever his um, car data might show. Yeah, I'm not on that. I mean, I'm not saying that law enforcement isn't corrupt or incompetent, but the whole idea that Rick was only arrested to get Liggett um, elected sheriff. I don't buy that. And if I lived in Carroll County and Rick was arrested, whatever, October 26th, 28th, it would be a reminder to me that Liggett, it took him five and a half years to make an arrest when the guy works at, fuck, oh, sorry, at um, CVS one block from the Carroll County Sheriff where Liggett's, Liggett works. And just one other thing, um, when I was saying that the owner of JC's bar said that Rick's voice did not match bridge guys, there are some rumors that other people have said that Rick's voice did match bridge guys. So we'll have to wait and see who shows up to the trial. <laughs> it might not be any of these main people. We might get everybody replaced. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Just a reminder, like we have to wait and see what is presented at the trial. We don't know all this other possible evidence. Not D.B. Cooper. If Rick is not bridge guy, it's still a huge waste that they did not follow up on the lead earlier. I totally agree with that. Even though, yes, before I guess I said I did not. I, I don't know what, what happened with this whole thing that Rick talked to the conservation officer at a grocery store and the follow-up said, the conservation officer wrote, fo potential follow-up. Who were the three girls near Freedom Bridge? Something like that. Which to me, I, it's also important. Rick says he was there. So on October 13th, 2022, law enforcement went to Rick's house and then they took him to whatever the command center to interview him. He said he was there noon to 1.30, whereas previously the 2017 tip was written. It said Rick was there 1.30 to 3.30, which obviously is a lot, makes him look a lot more guilty if he was there that later time frame. But he said he parked at CPS. He said he parked next to an old building. I'm not getting into that whole thing. He parked at CPS um, around noon. So it takes about five minutes to get to the start of the trail after you go through Freedom Bridge Circle. So Rick is saying he saw three girls around 12.05, but law enforcement know if there was a group of three girls around that area at 12.05. If there's not, that's not good for Rick's timeline. So yeah, there's a lot of this various other things that could be presented at trial to make look uh, Rick look either innocent or guilty. David, thank you for clarifying. A boiler maker is part of a train or a drink with beer and whiskey. All right, thank you. 
we learned one thing today. So yeah, the Purdue, Purdue University is a college, obviously in Indiana, and their mascot or whatever their thing is Purdue Boilermakers. So since it's a college, I'm assuming they're talking about beer and whiskey. Shelly says, so law enforcement got the warrant for AT&T, which is a phone company in America for people who are outside America, for these two owners, BH and PW's phones, but never served it. Apparently that's what the defense said within the past month. They saw like a draft of the search warrant for the phone data for these two guys, but it seemed like it was never served to AT&T. Now, seven years, is that info still available? I doubt it. I did. I have a video called Evidence Against Richard Allen, and I looked into like car data and phone data and stuff, and I don't think AT&T has data from seven years ago. I'm almost certain. Art of deduction. The FBI task force was not the official lead investigative, aka. So yeah, the unified command is called like the top six or seven guys. So Liggett, Holman, uh, Jay Harper. I don't know. I think like there were six guys who, as I said before, it's like, how were these six guys accessing all this information? If it was so scattered and it's taken over a year for them to organize it and pass it over to the defense. Hi, Cappy. Rick is guilty, but this may have been the worst investigation in history. I don't know. I'm just hoping that either way, that there's enough evidence for the jury to make the correct decision. Sonic, high Sonic, what's <laughs> High Sonic 7 Endscape. I think McClellan got his law certificate from Purdue. Uh, I don't know. Danielle says, I don't think the prosecution has enough organization to be aware if they did not get anything back um, from Bald and Rosie. Yeah, I don't know how this whole thing works with the prosecutor getting evidence from law enforcement and then turning it over as part of the discovery. Seven days at sea, Rick had a modern vehicle. They should be able to connect the GPS. It's so confusing. Well, the issue is, is it was five and a half years later when they finally got access to Rick's car. Uh, two things about that. Um, what are the two things? One was somebody made a very good point. Since law enforcement took control of Rick's car or they towed it on October 13th, 2022, did they drive it by Hoosier Harvester camera in the afternoon, like a similar time to 1.27 PM to be able to compare, did that match the February 13th, 2017 car? If they both matched, that's a great evidence to pre uh, present to the jury at the trial. If not, that's seriously messed up that law enforcement got that wrong. Um, the other thing was, even though it was five and a half years after the murders, Rick only lived a mile and a half from where he worked at CVS. So I did some research into how long these car computers hold data. I don't know. It could be still available, but I'm curious to know why would the prosecution not include in any of their filings that Rick's car showed he was there from like 1.30 to 3.30 or 4. Obviously for the PCA on October 13th, that was to get access to Rick's car. So they did not have access to the car to include that in the main PCA that we know. Al on the prowl thinks Rick is guilty. Again, I have a hard time believing all 12 jurors will agree. I have not seen enough either way to show if Rick is 100% innocent or guilty. I'm waiting for the trial. But I do agree that I will be surprised if there is a definitive decision from the jury. And everyone's like, okay, it's, it's over. Purdue clarifying. Purdue is not a law school. Hi, Jenny. Nice to see you.
Angel Ray, that's so convenient of law enforcement or the prosecutor that they only gave EF's phone data because it shows his phone at home, if I recall. Yeah. So in the Frank's memo said this EF guy, who is this guy in Rushville, two hours away from Delphi, that one of these law enforcement officers interviewed and said he has the mental capacity of a seven or eight year old. Um, I'm pretty sure his phone data said that his phone was left at his house in Rushville. And there was absolutely no activity on it from 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I believe in the Frank's memo, there was some kind of assumption that EF may have been this person who was spotted around 8.30 a.m. at the start of the private drive by a couple who owns a house there. My issue, which I referenced in at some point in my seven hour video on the Frank's memo, if they're saying that um, EF was that 830 guy and they have his phone data, well, what did the phone data show between 630 AM to 830 AM, which would have been the two hour drive from Rushville to the start of the private drive in Delphi. Also EF and all these ODNs, they posted stuff online when the Frank's memo came out. And to me, they seemed more angry that their names were released publicly compared to being scared that they were revealed as the true murderers. Like they were all posting like, this has ruined my life, my job, my family's been harassed and stuff like that. EF, as I said before, he's, I don't know, he might have some developmental issues. He posted on Facebook something like, oh yeah, I drove my turtle to um, Delphi. So I believe he was saying he did not have a car to drive to get to Delphi on the day of the murders. Obviously, the defense is kind of saying, based on, I guess, law enforcement data, that maybe some of these other guys from the Rushville area drove to Delphi, a carpool to do the sacrifice of white girls. High caricature contest. Hi, Grandpa Munster's multi-track lab. That's the first time I've seen that one. I believe you're talking about, will the trial be televised? Anybody know? March 18th, next Monday, is this contempt hearing and Rick's four new charges. That is not televised. We're still waiting to revolt if Gull says that the trial May 13th to May 31st will not be televised. Yeah, it better be. Sorry, I'm just looking for a comment that we haven't really discussed yet. Hi, Fifi, Honey Blossom. Thank you. No, I do not want to pursue full crime or true crime at all. I try to avoid true crime and people who follow it. <laughs> Kidding. No, I appreciate everybody who shows up to these uh, live chats repeatedly and shares your thoughts because I'm not acting like I'm an authority on this or I have all the answers. I have like no answers. I'm just trying to figure stuff out either way, which I'm not successful at, but hoping the trial will finally present various facts that either prove that Rick was innocent or guilty. Yeah, lots of various opinions in the chat. Some people think Rick is guilty. Some people think he's innocent. Shelly says that the Odinist PW said they have sacrificed horses in their rituals when he, uh, when PW was on the YouTube channel Sleuth Intuition. Hi, Chris. Chris wants to know where can we find the four brand new charges against Rick? and the filings by the defense. Um, I have them on my laptop on my, my other computer, so I can't really bring it up, bring it up. It's very short and there's no real like specific information in it. So I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. 
I, I don't know where you could find it. Maybe on Reddit, if you look, I don't know where you would look though. What, what, would you, what you would Google to find that specific filing, sorry. I'll talk about it on um, my Monday live chat if you have nothing better to do. <laughs> Hi, the simulation. It would be interesting to see if the defense could question an FBI agent who worked on this case to find out why it was so disorganized. I've contacted a few ex FBI agents to see if they could at least educate me about how this whole Orion system worked, not looking for any kind of like date or whatever secret information, just to try and find out how it worked. And nobody ever replies to me. Hi, KT. McClellan was a defense attorney before he became a prosecutor. He definitely knows what ex parte means. Yeah, a lot of people were shocked that he would even reference a filing that he should not have even had access to, which is why he deleted the request the day later. Seven days at sea. I think you're talking about Mitch Westerman. The dude who leaked crime scene photos should be in jail. So Mitch Westerman is a former employee of Baldwin who went to Baldwin's office for a meeting. It's like, what was he even meeting with Baldwin about? Was it to discuss strategy, which I know that the defense has said Baldwin was dis discussing strategy with Westerman and that at some point Gull did say it's okay to discuss like case strategy without filing an official request with Gull to give certain access to discovery evidence. Um, Westerman was arrested for a charge called conversion for taking a photo of Abby and Libby's bodies, the photos that were on Baldwin's uh, conference room table. I looked yesterday, I think his next or his court hearing or his trial is maybe scheduled for June of this year. Yeah, there seems to be a debate about this. Shelly says, no way in heck was this one person who carried this out. My opinion, but I think it's obvious. Well, I have a variety of opinions about this. So from the Frank's memo, I took all the actions that the defense was saying, like, how could a one man, which they repeated repeatedly, um, how could one man, five foot four, do this and this and this and this? So I made a spreadsheet with all those actions. And to me, I believe one person could have done this and been on 350, uh, on whatever, uh, route 300 by 3:57 PM, which is when one of this, these drivers said she saw a man matching bridge guy or the photo of bridge guy from Libby's phone. If somebody else is involved and Rick truly is bridge guy, why has law enforcement not found or arrested anybody in the year and a half almost since Rick was arrested? I don't know. McClellan just gave these four new charges and saying that Rick is the killer. So what evidence do they have for that? Hopefully we'll find out more on Monday. Hi, Bossy. Thank you. Nice to see you. And also, I want to talk about this. Yeah. So Danielle says, I agree. No way it's one person. So we know that from the Frank's memo that Liggett and Lesenby in their August 2023 depositions with the defense team said that they thought it was more than one person involved. Although it seems to be some kind of like um, contradiction by Liggett, where Liggett, I guess, behind the scenes was saying, yeah, to Lesenby, I agree. I think it's more than one person, but obviously only one person has been arrested so far. Angel Ray, is there possibly a second picture of PW at a ritual touching a tree? Because the statement that is the same height is obviously untrue. It's not a picture. It's like a 28 or 26 minute video period. So, so if they watch the entire 28 minute video, they would see that PW was reaching up to eight feet, not four feet. 
Jenny, I don't know if somebody said, I try not to say the full names of these people, even though some people don't have a high regard for Odinus. They've never been charged with anything. So PW is the like really tall Odinist. He has like, he's definitely not bridge guy. I don't know what else to, how to describe him. He did a uh, interview on Sleuth Intuition YouTube channel a few months ago. I thought he was fairly convincing that he's not involved in the murders. Tom, how far behind am I? Uh, 50 minutes right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so various people think it was one person. Some people think it was two, but when is there going to be another arrest? I don't know. And when are police going to arrest any of these Odinists that the defense is saying there was significant evidence pointing towards them being involved in the murders and not Rick? Bianca is saying, I'm thinking Abby had to had a phone. She borrowed one or something. People said maybe Libby had an old phone. I believe Libby had an iPad that she would let Abby use because there's been like a leaked, I believe it's Instagram, like direct messages between Abby and Libby in the few months before they were killed. Um, so obviously Abby had some kind of device at her house that allowed her to use Instagram. Hi, Bren. Bren is sure Rick is guilty. David is sure it's not Rick. Yeah, I'm just hoping, as I said before, that this trial will at least have some kind of evidence enough to show if Rick truly was bridge guy and at the crime scene or whatever, at the trails, at least from the 1.30 to 3.30 time frame, or the noon to 1.30 time frame. If you guys saw my latest, I don't want to call it a deep dive, it's only one hour, but there's this whole discrepancy of the time frame of noon to 1.30 or 1.30 to 3.30. But after like that was referenced in the Frank's memo that Rick said in October 2022 to Liggett during his interview, I was there new to 1.30. I never saw anybody really do like any investigate. I don't want to call it an investigation, but anyone look into, does that make sense that Rick was there noon to 1.30? So I have a video titled, how did Richard Allen not see the four girls and bridge guy? And nobody has really given me, not that they owe me, but I'm curious to know like what possible way does Rick go arrive at noon, pass these mystery three girls around the start of the bridge around 12.05, gets to High Bridge around 12.20, stands on platform one looking at fish. In the PCA, it says after he was on platform one watching fish, he went back and sat on a bench. There's only six benches. And we know that these four girls took a photo of High Bridge where Rick was around at least starting 12.20 p.m. These four girls took a photo that was timestamped 12.43 p.m. So based on my expert calculations, they would have had to arrive around the start of the trail at Freedom Bridge around 12.28 to 12.30. They walked past all six benches. They never saw anybody on the trails for that, for the, at least the hour that these four girls were on the trails. They did not see anybody until they left around 1.30. And they said the guy they passed arriving um, and headed toward Mona High Bridge was a guy matching the photo from Libby's uh, screenshot video. So also I mentioned, Rick said he saw car vehicles parked at mirrors while he was walking on the trail. So Rick never saw adults. Who were those adults who drove those cars to mirrors? These four girls never saw these adults who supposedly were parked at mirrors. So there's things like that that make me wonder, was Rick truly telling the truth or not? Because, I don't know, it, it does not add up to me that Rick was being truthful. 
and nobody has given, I don't want to say a decent explanation. I mean, some people said, well, people have bladder issues in their 50s or 40, Rick was 44 at the time of the murders. So people said maybe Rick had to, you know, relieve himself in the woods. Okay, but he was only there from noon to 1.30 for 90 minutes. He lives six to 10 minutes away. You would think he would relieve himself before he left to go to the trails. I don't know. I mean, that home bathroom thing does not really add up to me. Some people say, well, there's other trails to take, but according to the PCA, Rick never said I went on these other trails. He said he went from CPS, the full length of the trail to the high bridge platform one, and then back to a bench. So hopefully at one point we'll get his full October 13th, 2022 interview where he says exactly what he did. But if it does not include, oh yeah, I went through whatever the trail that goes off the side of, um, the high bridge, then that doesn't really add up to these four girls walking past every bench and not seeing Rick on their way when they arrived or when they were leaving. And they apparently also went down the 505 trail that goes down to the creek. Hi, Kelly. Rope and any bindings were never mentioned on any PCA, not at Lobensport, not at Allen's. Yeah, I don't think any um, anything resembling rope was taken from Rick's house in October or being at the crime scene. Let me skip a bunch of them. <laughs> Sorry for everybody who I'm skipping over your comment here. I'm, st I'm like 50 hours, 50 hours. Oh my God. Can you imagine 50 minutes behind? Babu's Frick, when it all comes down to it, is he confessed multiple times? Everything else is just YouTube fodder. If Rick did not supposedly confess, I would be more inclined to maybe believe he's innocent. But as I just said, I mean, that whole timeline, he definitely needs to answer some questions how he was not seen by these girls and why is a car resembling his going in the direction of CPS at 1.27 p.m., which would totally line up to me more so than the noon to uh, 1.30 timeline. If Rick is bridge guy, he passes Hoosier Harvester camera at 127, parks the CPS around 128, 129. It takes uh, four to five minutes to get to the start of the trails where these girls said they passed a man. This was not in the PCA, but one of the girls talked to Doug Rice, who's on Reddit as Bitter Beat Poet. And that guy wrote online that one of these four girls said the guy they passed resembled Jimmy Dale Duval, who's like a local sex offender who d I think a lot of you guys know who I'm talking about. And I've seen his picture, who's a guy who resembles Rick. And I know like these four girls, or at least the three of the four girls gave a fairly wide variety of descriptions of the guy they passed. But to me, it does add up that Rick is possibly bridge guy based on uh, this later time frame and some of these witness statements and various other evidence. Plus, why is he? I, we have to wait and see. There's been rumors that he also has been like confessing to whatever doctors or mental health professionals at Westville. So I don't know. Hopefully, time will tell. Al on the Prowl wants to see the original interview done back in 2017 of Rick. And I also want to know exactly what Witness 4 saw. I agree. Like, Witness 4, I, I want to know exactly what her testimony is. Um, Rick's, there's this whole issue that Doolin, the conservation officer, said he thought he audio, audio recorded all of his interviews with people in 2017 but he can't find the one he did with Rick. I don't know. I've heard, no, I, don't, I don't say that. <laughs> Pretend like I didn't say that. I've heard a variety of rumors about when and how Rick got in touch with the conservation officer. Hopefully by the end of May, we'll find out the truth and how law enforcement did not properly follow up on Rick. 
criminality, prosecution has to turn over all inculpatory or exculpatory evidence. So say the person who made the sketch didn't, didn't see Mike Patty until 5 p.m., it wouldn't be of use to the investigation. All right, sorry, I know I highlighted your first part of the comment like an hour ago. What are we at? Exactly two hours. We have exactly 59 minutes left. Hopefully, I'll look at the clock before then. Hi, 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 Hiawatha. Allen County, Fort Wayne is the second largest city in Indiana. Should be able to get an impartial jury, in my opinion. Now, as far as the judge, not so much. Yeah, people are, are saying like certain of these um, revelations by the defense or the prosecution are tainting a jury pool. But there's a ton of people who don't even know how to use the internet. So I'm sure they're going to find some bingo players who know nothing about this case. No offense to people who play bingo. David says, I know if I was shackled and treated like the dude in Silence of the Lambs, that I would be under tremendous stress and duress. I agree with that. But also, it's been said that Rick made it, sorry, Rick made comments of um, wanting to harm himself when he arrived at Westville. So like within the first, I don't, I don't want to say that within the first few days, which I don't, because I don't know. But if in legal filings, they're saying when he arrived at Westville, he's been making these comments like he wants to hurt himself. But I agree. It's like, I do not think it's accept acceptable that he has to be put into shackles to meet his defense attorneys and to walk in and out of court. He's either like five foot four to five foot six. He's not going to, everybody's going to be Kung Fu fighting. It's like, why can't they just let him have handcuffs and not these shackles however has rick done stuff in jail or sorry prison don't want to say he's in jail when he's in prison what has he done there that may have forced whoever's transporting him to feel like he needs to be put into shackles i know that the defense referenced um two incidences where rick was either tased or the guards tried to tase him one of them was uh what was it i'm sure most of you have seen a jail cell so they have the bars and then there's like this slot where they can put in whatever food trays so apparently there's a rule that the inmates are not supposed to be sticking their hands through this slot the defense even admitted that on this video the guards say to Rick, put your hands inside of your cell and not through this little slot. Rick did not remove his hands from the cell, which to me is like, why is this 50 year old man not following these simple rules? He was then tased. And so, I mean, I agree that a five foot four person behind bars should not be tased. He's like no threat. But at the same time, it's like, if you don't want to get tased, why can't you follow this simple rule when you're told if you do not put your hands inside your cell, you're going to get tased? I just don't understand like, why Rick can't follow that simple rule. And I forget what the other um, supposed tasing incident was. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I can't remember all the facts. Luna, I guess it's from Indiana. The prosecution is supposed to turn over everything, but we have our own rules here. Hi, Malibu. The timeline is critical. Is that what law enforcement and the prosecution is dodging? I, As I said before, I've not seen anything either way definitively proving Rick's Rick being there noon to 1.30 and home by 1.45 or Rick being there 1.30 to 3.30, either some kind of car or phone data other than th his car supposedly being on video or something matching his car at 1.27 p.m. headed towards the trail, not away. Shelly is not saying Rick is not involved. 
I'm saying there's too much evidence on other locals. And for one man to pull all that off in that time frame is just silly. Okay. I, I think somebody, one person could have done it. Hi, no scrubs. I'm not going to sing TLC. He sent a letter. So Rick sent a letter to the judge early on to request a public defender, talking about how he had no money for a defense lawyer, but he never claimed to be innocent in that letter. That's correct. But some people say he doesn't have to. He said he's throwing himself at the mercy of the court. But you are correct. He never said, I'm innocent of these charges which does not necessarily mean that he is guilty. Hi, Grandma Shelley. The water in Deer Creek would not be clear enough to see the fish. I don't think so. You obviously haven't seen some of my deep dive videos where I show photos from that day. And also even the helicopter footage from the day after when the girls were found, the water in Deer Creek was not clear. But even in that helicopter footage from the day after, there are certain like ripples in the top of the creek that some people said there are some big ass fish in the Deer Creek. So maybe they were coming to the top of uh, the water. So it is possible that if Rick did truly go there to watch fish noon to 1.30, that he did intend to see fish. But as I've said in my latest deep dive about how did Rick not see the four girls, how long when you're on platform one looking down into muddy water, would you say, all right, that's enough of this. I'm going to go sit on a bench. And if so, like, why was he just sitting on a bench for an hour doing what? So I'm very curious to hear what he said to uh, law enforcement in October of 2022. Shelly says, we have no idea what the confessions say. We, well, we do kind of. And also I think it is, it's important to know, we don't know like what his tone of voice was. Cause I think even just seeing like the text of these phone calls to his wife on April 3rd, I mean, it's not going to give the full whatever scope of what his true mental state was at that time. Was he crying and sounding like a man who is revealing to his wife of 30 years, I killed those girls? Because the prosecution wrote that they transcribed it and he admitted that he killed Abby and Libby. So I don't know how that can really be confused, Shelley, but we'll have to wait and see or hear at the trial. Purdue says, when you threaten to hurt yourself because perhaps you have a guilty conscience, you want to confess to the people you love, wife and mom. I just think it's so suspicious that even the defense said Rick was okay mentally for the first five months at Westville in solitary confinement. It was not until April 3rd that they say he started acting schizophrenic and delusional. April 3rd, was the day that the defense intern and private investigator met with Rick. So what did they talk about in that meeting? Does the video of Rick in his cell after that meeting show him carrying papers and then looking at them and then freaking out and calling his wife? I think in totality, that's going to be very powerful for the jury to see if that is truly how it uh, played out. I don't know how it played out though. Seven Days at Sea says Rick was using a fish stock app, which locates fish. So the water wouldn't need to be clear. It's just a bizarre alibi. Yeah, 
I don't think everybody has heard this other possible explanation. So Rick said he was looking at a stock ticker. Yeah, so I don't know if that's um, true, seven days of seeing. Somebody says there is an app to see, like, I don't even know exactly what it is, in local creeks and rivers to see, like, when, it's called stocking the river when, I guess, some people who work with, like, the Wildlife Foundation, not the foundation, but the, whatever, conservation officers, something like that, might put fish into these various bodies of water. So somebody said maybe Rick was looking at an app which shows when fish were added to Deer Creek, but it was written down that he was looking at a stock ticker, which is more often referred to like Wall Street, the stock exchange, if it's a ticker, as far as I know. We'll see. And people are wondering like how much stock did a 44 year old man who works at CBS really care about that he has to look at this ticker for however long he's walking on the trails. Bren says that fish story is so fishy. Let me skip over a bunch more. I'm an hour behind. How did I get even further behind? <laughs> Hi, Carol. Abby's mom, Anna, was very complimentary and protective of Ron Logan, as they had been friends and co-workers at one point. Yeah, she said that she did not think Ron Logan was involved. Yeah, Shelly, I think as of today, the trial starts in 60 days. Today's March 13th. Obviously, May 13th is two months away. Hi, Richard. Every one of these alleged and unproven motions continue to violate the gag order while they continue to sway public opinion and taint a jury pool. Yeah, I was wondering why, like, <laughs> all this information in yesterday's filing, that 18-page thing that I started off this live chat with, why did that have to become public? Obviously, all of us want to know as much information as possible, but why could that not have been filed under seal and confidential? But I said before, I think there are 12 people in that area who did not see all these different filings. Luna Ray says, I can't see how this goes to trial considering how humiliating it will be for the state. Well, maybe they truly do care about Abby and Libby and getting justice for them and they'll take the humiliation just to make sure that the person that they were trying to find for five and a half years is finally convicted. They're saying Rick was bridge guy. Um, it's three full weeks for the trial, the 13th to the 31st. I think it's like Monday, the 13th to uh, Friday, May 31st. Thank you, Amy. Shane Evans is the deputy prosecutor, but is he truly trying to become a judge? I'm still alone. <laughs> Thank you, this account. I appreciate you. Thank you, Charmaine, for being a member for 13 months. I think you're the oldest of the bunch. What have we not talked about? Malibu says there's no reason to hold the contempt hearing before the speedy trial. It can wait. Obviously, Rick wants Baldwin and Rosie as his attorneys. The Indiana Supreme Court said that Gull should not be removing them. So I agree with you that let's just get the trial. Then they can argue about who did not do the drop their job properly. Luna, how are you going to convict a guy with nothing to back it up? Well, Luna, we don't know all the evidence yet.
Sorry, I'm just looking for stuff that we haven't talked about. What time is it? I have another 45 minutes that you guys are going to make me do this one. <laughs> Criminality, I would be curious, the statistics of defendants testifying and being found not guilty or guilty. Yeah. I'm just saying there's no way I would not testify if I was truly innocent. I'm not going to sit at the defense table as a prosecutor lies about my involvement in the murder of two girls. I don't care what my attorneys advise me to do. There's no way I'm not sticking up for myself. Babu's freak. All I know is he confessed, allegedly, and admitted to being at the bridge. However, as of October 2022, he said he was at the bridge and on platform one, but from noon to 1.30, not at the time of the murder. So what is the prosecution going to present to show that that later timeline was the correct one? Malibu, the down the hill voice seemed relaxed. Sorry, relaxed, not false. It sounded like he was obviously in, trying to intimidate whoever he was, whoever bridge guy was. He was trying to intimidate these young girls to do what he wanted. Let me skip over a bunch more. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. Not D.B. Cooper. That theory isn't just, quote, they arrested Rick because of the sheriff's election. It's that there was a lot of pressure. So they really wanted it to be him when they came across him as a viable suspect. But, but as I said before, They've waited five and a half years to arrest the right guy. I'm sure a lot of you have seen or have followed this case. There's been 10 other guys that everybody's been saying, oh, that's him is Brian Chadwell, the professor, the pastor, all these other people that law enforcement felt like they could not make an arrest. So uh, I don't know that I feel like they were quick to arrest Rick. There were definitely some certain things that pointed to him being at the bridge that day, especially since the tip from 2017 said he was there 1.30 to 3.30. Also, this whole thing with um, the unspent round found two feet from Libby's body and Abby's bodies. I get that there's like debate about how reliable it is, but there's been a rumor that the guy who lived at the end of the private drive, he had a six hour gun, which is the same type that Rick had and police confiscated that for several months. So it's not been clarified or confirmed, but as a member of the jury, if the prosecutor says, we examined the six hour of this guy who lives across from the crime scene. The Indiana State Police analysis or an, hello analyst said that guy's six hour did not match the unspent round found at the crime scene. But when we compared Rick's six hour, the analyst said it did match. So to me, that could be um, fairly good evidence against Rick if that is true. Without me having to see how reliable. Um, it can be to match to exactly Rick's gun. If a similar gun was tested and it was not a match, then how is Rick's a match? I don't know. I'm sure they're going to be debating that at the trial. Yeah, I don't know, Luna Ray. That was revealed to, uh, yesterday that some of these interviews are missing audio. Bianca, there's no proof of Rick saying any time to 
the conservation officer. So why did it even say 1.30 to 3.30 on that tip? Some people have speculated, could it have been because like the unified command was telling people, we want you to talk to people who are on the trails 1.30 to 3.30? Because at that time, I think um, they thought Kelsey dropped them off around 1.30. And maybe it was all over by 3.30, but we don't know still when Rick talked to the conservation officer. So was that time frame even available when Rick was interviewed? Also, just to me, it seems like even if the conservation officer was told, ask people if they were there 1.30 to 3.30, don't you think, I know some people say, no, they're incompetent. If you ask, if Doolin said to Rick, were you there 1.30 to 3.30? I mean, if Rick was there noon to 1.30, people say, oh, he only said yes because I left around 1.30. So technically I was there 1.30 to 3.30, but I left at the start of that time frame. Don't you think Doolin would say, okay, around what time did you arrive? Around what time did you leave? To um, clarify, I don't know, we'll see. Babu's freak. You, know, you guys are having some like confessions debate. Uh, the defense did admit to admissions at the June 15th hearing. Rosie started off saying something like confessions, non-confessions, incriminating statements, non-incriminating statements. We'll address that at the trial. And also there was another point at that June 15th hearing last year where the Westville warden, I think, was talking on the stand about the conditions at Westville. I believe this was not recorded, so we have to rely on whatever, who is ever in the peanut gallery taking notes. <laughs> um, I thought there was a rumor saying that the Westville warden started to say something like Rick wrote him several letters. And at that point, Rosie objected to that line of questioning. They met at... Judge Gull's bench, and they did not pursue that any further. So why would the defense not want the Westville warden to talk about any communications from Rick? I'm sure we'll find out at the trial, or maybe we won't, I don't know. We have 36 more minutes till we're all dismissed. Yeah, I'm still so far behind. All right. <laughs> Malibu, to organize and cross-reference discovery evidence is a massive job and accuracy is critical. I, I agree. I mean, it's like 26 terabytes. It is a very time-consuming task, but why was it not organized from the very start? I don't know. I've, I've tried to find out how this all works, but I have not been successful. People are arguing about Purdue University and how good it is. Criminality, do you think a hung jury? I don't know, I just, it seems like everything in this case has gone wrong. And I just, I just feel so bad for the family members like wondering for seven plus years who did this and I just want them to have like a final sigh of relief. Okay, we know that we saw enough evidence that Rick was bridge guy. Just the thought of these family members waiting for the final decision and hearing anything that's like inconclusive and just thinking like how sad that's gonna be for them. I don't know, it just seems so horrible. So I'm hoping that the correct decision is made, so. I'm not expecting on May 31st, the jury says Rick is guilty. We felt like there was enough evidence and everybody moves on with their lives. Hi, Lil Butterball. Can you do a chat poll? Who thinks Rick is innocent or guilty? I have to go to my other chat thing here. So okay. yes, I will do that. So. How do I do a poll? Where is that? Oh, start a poll. Question, is Rick 
innocent or guilty? Yes or no? Star poll. I don't know if I'll remember to go look at the results, <laughs> but you guys should be able to see it. I don't know why you follow me on Twitter and here if you obviously don't like me. Next. LU and Purdue have loudest gyms in college hoops. Thank you for sharing that. Hi, Yaya. How do we know the Odinus EF's phone data? It was referenced in the Frank's memo. You obviously didn't watch my seven hour video or read the 136 page uh, document. Hi, Moon Shadow. I think the defense is spilling all these documents because they see all us YouTubers defending Rick. I bet there is evidence in there they are not talking about deliberately. Well, if they have like concrete evidence to show that Rick is innocent, why would they not be screaming about it, trying to get him out of prison right now? How's the poll going? Um, Yes, 81% think Rick is guilty. I, I I have not, I'm waiting for the trial to see all the evidence before I make a decision. As I've said previously, obviously, I really feel like he needs to answer certain questions because certain things don't add up to his earlier timeline. Uh, let me close the phone. Hold on. End poll. All right. Shelly, I don't understand why. McClelland has not handed over victim number two's phone to the defense. Yeah, I don't understand why it's taken so long to hand over an incredible amount of evidence. The defense needs all that stuff to at least properly defend Rick. I just want the trial to be fair to both sides. Hi, Mona. You missed my bonjour two hours and 26 minutes ago. <laughs> Hi, wayward. No, I'm not going to the trial. There's no reason for me to be there. But I, if it's uh, televised, I will unfortunately reluct reluctantly do live chats every day since we've been waiting for this moment for years. Thank you, little butterball. I'm muted? What? Are you serious? I don't think so. What? Oh my God, I'm like 45 minutes behind if I've been muted for 45 minutes. Tom's sweating now. All right, I don't think so. Hi, Sidonia. Could you explain a little bit more about phone data? Unfortunately, no. I did a um, video, Evidence Against Richard Allen. I think I created uh, chapters. So if you look for Evidence Against Richard Allen, and like at the bottom, it has like, you can put your cursor and it should like have these different chapters. I might have a chapter called Phone Data where I tried to at least show some of the things I found. But as I said before, I do find it interesting that neither side has presented anything to show if Rick's phone was on the trails noon to 1.30 and at, at home by 1.45 or the later timeline.
my king of kings, it's way too much time for one person within that timeline, in my opinion. If you're really interested to know, in my seven hour Frank's memo video, I do have a section where I show my spreadsheet of how long I think it would have taken the max amount of, maximum amount of time for one person to do all the acts at the crime scene. And to me, it could add up for that person, that one person to do it and be seen on 300 North by 3.57 PM by that driver. Hi, Paul. Why did law enforcement say at one point the second sketch, the younger guy, was for sure involved to crickets about that second sketch that looks nothing like Rick Allen? I know, like all of us wondered, April 2019, what the hell is this picture of this 20-year-old Justin Timberlake after several years of saying we're looking for this older guy? And in the Frank's memo, it was revealed that witness four who saw a man on platform one, she said she thought he was like 20 with poofy hair. And she went to law enforcement in March, 2019. So a month before that sketch came out and said that she was frustrated with law enforcement that the crime had now been unsolved for two years and law enforcement never told the public to look for this younger guy. So that's what that whole April 2019 second younger sketch was all about, it seems. My issue with that, I have an issue with everything. She was 50 feet away from this guy. And we know these three girls passed the same guy because all of them said the guy they saw was dressed like the guy in Libby's video. So if these three girls are walking about three feet from this guy on this narrow trail, are you more inclined to believe them than somebody who's looking at somebody from 50 feet away? I, I don't know. I, I am more inclined to believe people who are three feet away than three people who are uh, three feet away than one person who's 50 feet away. That's just my opinion. Richard believes Rick committed the crimes and nobody else. He would not go to the conservation officer the next day if others were involved. They'd kill him if he tried it. Lone wolf, 100%. A lot of people have debated why would he, if he truly is guilty, why would he come forward? Some people have said, well, maybe he was afraid that these three girls who he passed, or four girls, would identify him at the CVS where he worked. Obviously, for five and a half years, none of these girls who passed him saw him at CVS and said, oh, that's the guy who I passed. I'm not sure what to say. Hi, Big Fish Small Pond. Can the coroner really get the time of death to within 30 minutes or whatever? I, I don't know any, anything about anything, as I said before. <laughs> um. I know some people have said, oh, well, Abby, well, in the Frank's memo said she died a slow death. And some people said she lasted or whatever, she lived the, through the night. However, we know that she was found with her arms, apparently. I did not see the crime scene photos and I don't want to. But something like her arm, Abby's arms were like this with three branches on her chest and her neck. So if she lived for eight hours after 3 p.m. Why did her body not move? That's just my thought on that one. FP, other bad actors comment is always just referring to people who may have assisted Rick keeping his crime a secret, maybe destroying evidence slash knew his actions and provided false alibi. Well, one of my subscribers made a good point. So when Rick was arrested, I think it was obviously it was um, October 28th, November 22nd, I think they had a hearing about releasing the PCA and McClellan was saying, we believe there are other actors involved, so we don't want them to see anything confidential in 
the PC gang, which to me, it's like, if somebody you conspired with is arrested, you're going to know, like, they're going to find you soon. Well, one of my subscribers said the other actors could have been law enforcement at that time had Rick's DNA for over a month. They knew it did not match the DNA found at the crime scene. So they thought Rick was bridge guy and every and other things added up to him being involved, but they knew the DNA at the crime scene did not match Rick's. So why did two months ago, McClelland file these other uh, four charges, which essentially seem to show that Rick is the killer and not just bridge guy. Is there going to be some kind of evidence reveal next Monday that shows maybe law enforcement did find out who that DNA belonged to. And it was maybe a friend of Abby and Libby's who touched their sweatshirt. That's just like one possible explanation that I've thought of previously. That's possibly and probably wrong. We'll have to wait for the trial, I guess, to see more information about uh, this DNA. Luna, why is the state withholding the pick of Abby on the bridge and the empty bridge pick? I don't know. You'd think it would be fairly easy for them to find it. My King of Kings, the Onus Brad uh, BH told his ex-wife that PW has killed loads of people, has no problem killing race traitors. Um, okay. Well, not, not that it's not a big deal. But there are certain quotes attributed to that woman, the ex-wife, that apparently they did not add up because she also said that BH told her he got into a fight with PW in the woods while they were doing a ritual. So that was in the Frank's memo. But PW in his uh, live chat on YouTube said that was not true. They got in a fight in PW's living room because BH was going to church and also practicing Odinism. And PW was very like staunchly into Odinism. And he said, no, you have to choose either going to church with your family or worshiping Odin. And I guess BH could not make the decision in the living room. And so PW said, get the hell out of my house. So that quote by the ex-wife that they got in an argument insinuating was because it was that the ritualistic killing of Abby and Libby, that was not true. Um, there was something else. Yeah, but I mean, even saying that PW did that, he's obviously not bridge guy. So where's the evidence showing that BH and PW were at the crime scene or involved? The defense is saying there is significant evidence that BH and PW were involved in the murder. So I have not seen that yet. I guess we'll have to wait till the trial. Uh, we have 21 more minutes. Can I stop now? <laughs> oh. Let me scroll over a bunch more. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Big fish, small pond. Why didn't they check everyone with that car in the area first thing? I totally agree with you. We were talking, I was talking about this a while ago. So this Rick's car at least the way it looks in October 2022, the day his uh, nosy neighbors took photos of the car being towed. It's like a black sedan that has like a weird back shape, the Ford Focus, um, that certain model. It does not look like a normal sedan to me. His tires, where most tires like have a silver, whatever hubcap, his are all black. So if this 127 video shows a car with black tires, headed towards CPS in the time frame that matches up with these four girls seeing a guy five minutes later coming from CPS. Why did they not look in the small town of 3000 people for a black car with black tires? As I said before, Rick worked one block from where these investigators were. I don't know. Did Liggett and Lesenby both see this 127 PM video? and know that it's a black car with black hubcaps. I previously showed a photo of Rick's car parked at CPS in the front. 
backed he backed into the car the parking lot into the parking spot at work so why did like Liggett and Lesenby pass by CVS uh, I don't know five days a week for five years and not wonder hey that car matches that car we think might have parked a CPS don't know the answer Sorry, I'm looking for topics we have not discussed yet. Angel wants to know what exactly is a conservation officer and why would Rick speak to him and not the police? As I said before, I saw a TV news report where the reporter said there were up to 200 officers from 45 different agencies helping out in the first few days or few weeks of this case. So it seems like they were doing interviews within the first week at Delphi Police Department and not the Carroll County Sheriff's Office, which are, I would assume, very small offices that can't contain up to 200 different officers trying to help out. So I've heard a variety of things. One is that Rick did call police and say, I was at the trails. Two, that did call did not happen and Rick walked up to the conservation officer over a week later at the grocery store. We'll hopefully find out the truth at the trial. What else was I thinking? So if Rick, the defense in their one of their documents said, Rick called police to come forward since he had nothing to hide. So where is that phone call log saying what? Like what caused the person taking that phone call to say, okay, this guy said he was there. Did that phone call log say what time Rick said he was there on the phone? And does it say during that first phone call, did he say he was there 12 to 1.30 or 1.30 to 3.30? I don't know. Al on the prowl, if they had a case on the confessions, the defense attorneys would be looking for a plea deal. Yeah, it seems obviously um, Rick has never made a plea deal. So I, I, I'm just curious, why would he be confessing possibly to his wife and mom and mental health professionals and medical professionals, yet not officially admitting it and changing his plea? Is the defense team saying to him, we think we can get you to be found not guilty. I don't know. I, I don't know. It seems like most defense attorneys don't want to know from their client if they're guilty, from what I've heard. Big Fish Small Pond. If you're in solitary confinement, your mind literally goes to mush. You hear things. He hasn't done anything. They said he does crosswords and exercises. And if you have no control of anything in life, sometimes you have to rebel for your own sanity. Well, my issue is even the defense said he was fine in that situation for the first five months. Why all of a sudden, April 3rd, did he lose his mind? And why within a few weeks later, did it go back to normal? Newsflash, Tom doesn't understand prison. That's correct.
my king of kings, Rick asked if his family was still alive after his quote unquote confession, not suspicious at all. Um, yeah, that's actually not true. I don't, oh no, it, it is true. So this, whatever, his alleged admission happened on April 3rd. The defense said Rick was saying stuff to the defense in May on May 3rd or May 4th. Is my family okay? Is my wife okay? But to me, when I read that, I was like, why would Rick have to ask his defense team if his wife is okay? If he was making up to two phone calls a day to his wife previously, the prosecutor said in some document that Rick had not called his wife at all since his April 3rd phone call. That document was dated April 20th. So for at least 17 days, Rick did not communicate with his wife after she abruptly hung up, according to the prosecution. We'll have to wait and hear um, what went down at the trial. Richard says it's a two minute walk from the bridge to the crime scene that gives him 102 minutes to kill two teenage girls with a gun to uh, scare them and knives. Koberger killed four in eight minutes. I think my timeline is showed uh, an hour and a half or something or an hour and 39 minutes. We know from 2.13 is when they went down the hill. 3.57 p.m. is when he was seen on... 300, whoever bridge guy was. To me, that's a long time to do this. Um, 12 more minutes and we're done until Monday, unfortunately. <laughs> Sidonia, oops, sorry. The Division of Natural Resources does not stock that part of Deer Creek. All right, thank you. Instamat, Rick was a titan in the stock market. It'll be interesting to see if the uh, prosecution is going to present any kind of evidence showing that Rick did own stocks and would even have an interest in looking at a stock ticker while he's out on a trail. Or will the defense present that? Why would he say he was looking at a stock ticker? Diana says, Rick's phone did not have an IMEI number. Would that make it untraceable? Um, I think there's two different kind of ID numbers and one, I don't know, it's a hex ID or something like that. So there's two different options for phones and not having an IMEI number is not necessarily like shady, I don't think. All right, I'm at the section where you guys are arguing about fish and herring. <laughs> Uh, let me go here. Liz, I'm confused as to why people are rooting for the prosecution to fail. This isn't the Super Bowl. It's a double homicide case. I agree. It's like, do you want Abby and Libby to get justice and their families or not? Hi, Kathleen. Three weeks for the trial does not seem sufficient. I agree with you. Uh-oh, my poll has problems. What's wrong? Does it have to go into the poll shop? Oh, I left off. That's too, too much work. <laughs> yeah, I said I couldn't even say if he's guilty or innocent. Sorry, I should have said undecided. Oh, well, maybe next time. Sorry, my, my poll didn't work out. <laughs> All right, I'm in the section where people are complaining about my polling skills. All right, skip over some more comments. Exactly 10 minutes. Hi, Alley Cat. 
probably because he was using Kagan Klein's burner phone. Well, the defense has said Rick has no connection to other suspects. And if you consider Kagan another suspect, it means that there's no connection. And also in the Frank's memo, there was absolutely no reference to Kagan Klein or Ron Logan. So it seems like the defense at this point is saying the Odinists are, are responsible for the murders. Sorry, I know this is awkward silence, but I'm looking for some d new comments. Hi, Kennedy. Yet yeah, Doug Carter, we have not heard from him since he made the statement, I don't think. Doug Carter is still saying that both sketches were Rick, even after the arrest. ISP has always said they are not the same person in the two sketches. Yeah, obviously there's various things, but is um, Carter maybe saying that Witness 4's vision was clouded? I don't know. I do want to know if she was wearing prescription glasses or contacts, because I think being 50 feet away at that point of, in the afternoon where the sun is probably like up here, which you guys can't even see my hand disappearing, but <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a lot of variables about witness four's view of the guy on platform one. How long was she standing there staring at this guy? Also, it seems like law enforcement did not believe her other description of the car at CPS being from the 1960s. There was two other people at 210 and 228 who saw that same car and neither of them, neither of them described it as being from the 60s. One said it was a smart car. Another one said it was a purple PT cruiser or a small SUV, which are obviously not from the 1960s. So stay tuned. Yes, and this is a good point. Hi, Ivy Rose. Even though Witness 4 said the guy she saw looked to be 20 and poofy hair, which she later said he could have been as old as early 30s, she saw Libby's screenshot and said that was the guy she saw, just the face and the age did, or whatever the age and the hair did not match up to whatever the description is. Sorry, just looking for her comments. Richard says he heard rumors that Rick did not even meet with a Doolin, that he met someone named Skinner and Skinner contacted Doolin. Um, in the PCA, it references Doolin and not Skinner. So that's all I can really go on. I missed um, any kind of previous comment about this. So I'm wondering or assuming you're talking about the sister of EF, the Odinist, who said that he confessed to her. Both of his sisters apparently said that he confessed. One of them, though, did not. She met with police three times. And the first two times she said, or whatever, she did not really reveal anything. It was not until the third time that she said her brother, EF, made incriminating statements that he was at the crime scene. Also, I think the other sister described his behavior as, what, rambling and incoherent. I don't know. Is, Rick gonna, is Rick's behavior on the phone call to his wife also going to be characterized as rambling and incoherent? Stay tuned for all the trial revelations. People are still talking about my poll. Sorry, my poll next time will be better.
hide the silver leaf. What caused the police to go to Rick's home and then search it? After so many years, what triggered this? Well, according to the PCA, while investigators were reviewing prior tips, they came across a tip narrative from 2017 and they looked into, which was Rick's whatever, talking to the conservation officer, which all of us are like, why did they not follow up on this within the first few days? Some people speculated um, there was obviously obviously this uh, Wabash River search from mid-August to mid-September 2022, where it seems like they were trying to find if Kagan Klein was involved if, or if he or his father threw any kind of murder weapon or phone into the Wabash River near Kagan Klein's father's house. After four to five weeks of not finding anything, some people have said, Doug Carter told in investigators, go back to the very beginning and start over. So on September 21st is when apparently this 2017 Rick interview was presented to Tony Liggett. So then obviously they must have been like, crap, how do we not ever look into this guy? So I think that's um, the basic gist of it. I don't know, there might be some other reason, uh, Silverleaf. Um, three more minutes. All right, let me do one more comment. If people are being rude, just um, moderators uh, ban them. Purdue says she wants uh, to interview the conservation officer. Was he friends with Rick and did not think he could have done this? That's a good point. The conservation officer is current. He changed jobs. And I believe he's the Delphi fire department chief or something. So that's a good point. Did he talk to Rick and Rick said, yeah, I was there whatever time. And Rick is obviously not very tall. So did the conservation officer think he could not be capable of this, his friend and the guy from CVS or whatever. We'll have to wait and see what um, I'm sure the conservation officer will obviously testify at the trial. All right, one final comment. Sorry, just looking for something we have not talked about. There's a lot of comments going back and forth. <laughs> Ivy Rose says, I thought the point of a burner phone was that you didn't have to have a name connection to it. Well, it's going to be interesting to find out if any of the 16 phones that were taken from Rick's house matched up to anything at the crime scene. So far, we have not really seen anything presented by the prosecution, which shows that they know that Rick was there at the crime scene. Obviously, what I showed at the beginning, the defense is saying none of those phones near the crime scene between like whatever 302 to 327 matched rick's phone or anything in rick's name so did he have a burner phone there's some rumor that rick bought a burner phone uh a week before the murders at family dollar or something i don't know where that rumor comes from it's two hours and 59 minutes i'm done i'll see you on monday thank you everybody for joining goodbye <laughs>